Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Bay of Islands Whangarā Community Board meeting, Thursday, 7th of July. To those of you that have tuned in, welcome on this, what's going to be a miserable wet day, I think. So it's probably a good day to sit and watch our meeting. Um, we are going to be voting by division, which means some boxes will pop up on the screen and we will vote individually um, on each item in our agenda. So on that note, um, I will um, open with a karakia before we introduce ourselves. We are set through the board's discussions and decisions the representatives elected may advocate on behalf of the Bay of Islands Whangarau community with aroha, imagination, skill and wisdom to achieve a fairer and more united community that enhances the well-being of the community and solves the community's problems efficiently and effectively. I'm Belinda Ward, I'm your chair for the day and I'll get my board members and staff present to introduce themselves, starting with my deputy chair. Thank you. You're muted, Frank. Good morning, Frank Owen, um, representing the Kerry Kerry subdivision. <laughs> Just to remind you all to stay muted unless you're speaking, please. I've got Lane and Bruce. Uh, good morning, everybody. Lane here. Um, I'm representing the Kerry Kerry Ward subdivision. Bruce, Mills. Yep. And good morning from Bruce. Mills, I'm representing the Fungarai Subdivision. Kilda. So you guys sound like you're using a karaoke microphone, just saying. Kilda, ko manawai o Aos Tukungwa, no Waiomi o Hau, e noho ana hau ki kawakawa i nai nei. I'm the Moirua Kawakawa Subdivision representative on the board. No mai, haere mai. Kilda. Dave. Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko Dave Hukwe Kōpa, toko ingoa, no Beechhaven ki Tamaki Makoro aho, ke Waipapa, toku kainga noho, he Manu Hapori Haora mo te Fatu Ora. Um, I'm Dave Hukwe Kōpa, aka Bear at times. Um, I was born in Beechhaven in Auckland. I live in Waipapa. I am the representative uh, for the Kiri Kiri um, Waipapa subdivision. I'm also a community wellbeing advisor for what used to be Northland DHB and is now to, uh, Te Whato Ora, which is uh, Health New Zealand. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa e nā mihi nui ki uh, hapori uh, in regards to community. Thanks, Dave. And we have Councillor Rachel Smith with us. Tēnā tātou katoa, ko Rachel Smith tokungua, no kiri kiri aho. So my name is Rachel Smith and I am one of the Far North District Councillors who sits alongside this board in a uh, connection capacity with no voting rights. Kia ora. Thank you, Rachel. And Councillor Clendon um, normally sits in with us in our meetings too, with no um, voting rights, but he has speaking rights. So hopefully he will join us a bit later. He may be having connectivity issues as well. Uh, good uh, morning, we have... um, Belinda. I'm oh, here. Oh, you're there? Fact, so Great. Yes. Thank <laughs> I'm you. just incognito. I, have, I haven't got a good connection, so I'm leaving my camera off. Welcome to the far north, yes. <laughs> OK, David, thank you. Um, we have um, Manuela Gamu Hornell, our Russell subdivision representative, is hoping to teams in with us today. She's travelling and obviously is having connectivity issues. Um, so I won't put her apologies at this stage because she may come in and out. And uh, Joshna, you can just monitor that, please, if she does. Councillor Smith is also with us till about 12.15. She has a, another engagement to go off to. So um, thank you very much for, for coming, Rachel. And we have staff with us. We have our liaison officer. Would you like to introduce yourself? It's Joshna Pandey from the Democracy Services team. I'm sitting in support of the uh, Bay of Islands meeting today. Thank you. I see we have Rhonda. Kia ora, Rhonda. 
Any other staff there that would like to introduce themselves before we start? Yeah, good morning. Uh, Bernard Peterson, Maintenance and Operations Manager, Northern Transportation Alliance. Very important person, Bernard. Welcome to our meeting. Thank you for coming. Right, so we'll move on with, uh, we have a number of um, speakers here this morning for the uh, funding applications. And our first speaker for the day, uh, we have the uh, Kitty Kitty Gymnastics Club, page 81 of your agenda, with additional information on page 29. Jamie, morning Jamie, did present um, to us. Morning, Belinda. She did present um, very well to us at our uh, June meeting at the centre in Kitty Kitty. And we have asked Jamie to come back because we are reconsidering her application due to the new financial year rollover uh, in relation um, to the purchase of a vehicle. So would you like to speak again, Jamie, or are you here to answer any questions and queries today? Uh, yes, I'd love to speak again. Thanks, Belinda, um, and obviously answer any questions. Um, Kia ora koutou katoa. Um, I, yeah, I feel great that I get another chance at speaking to this application because it's something that um, the team, uh, our committee and coaches and, and obviously our kids are, are gunning for. Um, we applied, as you know, for a contribution towards a club van and last um, time I uh, last month, I talked a lot to the um, it being vital for um, what we call our Gym Connect service for our Kitty Kitty primary and high school students attending our after school programs. And um, we are also wanting to launch a um, mobile play gym program for under fives, where we go to centres centers that are now have uh, suffering staff shortages. A lot of um, ECEs around Kitty Kitty uh, facing that issue. We know that firsthand because now they can't come to the club with their kids and we had five centres doing that. And we've now we're down to four. And saying that we've picked up a couple of schools, which is great. Uh, but yeah, that um, the Gym Connect service uh, and uh, Play Gym um, program combined is around 200 kids per week. So it is um, a lot of our membership. So just to sort of uh, elaborate on something new this, um, at, at this occasion, um, I wanted to break down some very real and, and substantial impact on big societal issues that this um, would, would enable. So inclusion matters. Um, and you know we have a lot of kohene we, um, girls and youth we, um, you know, I am always interested on how much funding we we are, are enabled by and what we can we can um, apply to and what um, sort of is coming out of Sport New Zealand and Sport Northland. And I've done a piece of research recently where I got some data a data set from Sport New Zealand, and you know it, it's a little bit confronting. Um, you know we've got things like. Um, a 94% membership in rugby league of males, they get $136 per member. You contrast that with gymnastics, 75% um, female membership, we get $8 per member. And this isn't unique um, just to rugby league. This is kind of, uh, although they are, they are up there, um, this is unique to sports that have that dominant male participation base. And the reason I, I want to, to, to um, make a point of that today is because that actually is across the system. So that filters down into places like Sport Northland, and I think they came out last time was, you know, go to Sport go to sport Northland and get some funding from them. And we do, you know, we, 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 we try and tap into things like Tumanua. But, um, you know, there is a culture still that we, we are in the middle of shifting towards being able to enable more women and girls to participate. Um, 
So yeah, inclusion matters. And, and you know, we have an opportunity to come to the community boards, um, well, clubs that have higher percentage of women and girls. And it is great because, you know, we don't see that bias with youth. Um, and that's one of the things that actually I'd like to point out that that, that is awesome. Um, the other thing around inclusion is disability. You know, when I was really, I was really thinking about this and, you know, um, personally something has sort of happened to me lately where I'm less, less mobile than I used to be. And, um, you know, it, it, it made me have a renewed appreciation for, you know, a service like this, where there is no public transportation for parents. And these parents that, you know, they want their kids to go to sport, but actually it might be a bit of an effort due to their health, getting them to sport. And I, I never thought about it in this way, but there, there could be those kids that their parents, they actually, it's hard for them to break away from their day and, and, and take them to sport. And um, I'm talking now, you know, um, one of the, the things I'm thinking about that could be quite debilitating is long COVID. Um, it's, it's, it's on the rise and, and let me tell you, it's, it's not great. Um, so one of the seven pillars of inclusion is accessibility. And this is central to what this fan will unlock is access to sport. There's also, I mentioned a little bit about this last time around social community responsibility. And actually I'm really proud that our club has actually spent 10 years offering this service. Um, you know, Janet mentioned that she purchased the last van that we had that's since died. Um, and One we, minute, Jamie. we ran that for 10 years, thanks. Um, and, you know, this is rising cost to New Zealanders, um, you know, that social community responsibility. Filling up your tank is not easy now. So this will really help those parents that are struggling with that. And also with the lower carbon emissions that I had worked out last time. Um, I've since applied to pub charity, because um, I know that came up last time. We've applied for 10,000 from them and that closed today. So hopefully we should know shortly. Um, and I just want to finish with, you know, I mentioned that we've, We've done this for 10 years. This is a massive legacy for gymnastics and for kids in sport. And I'd really like you guys to be part of the next 10 years uh, and beyond. So thank you for listening to me. Happy to answer some questions. Thanks, Jamie. And thanks for that fresh information. That's wonderful. You do an amazing job. Any additional questions for Jamie Manawai? Kia ora, through the chair. Morena, hoa kapai. <laughs> it's always good Morena. to see you and hear from you. I'm really glad that you continue to come to our board and share um, the things that you're seeing and um, hearing in our community at this level, especially with our kohine and their whānau. Um, I always like hearing you speak because you're an active demonstration of deep listening. You know, in your corridor that you just gave, you've responded to a couple of things that we asked. And that isn't always the case when we corridor turopu who come and seek funding from us. They don't always grab hold of those opportunities that we suggest and follow them up. So in the first instance, I just want to mihi to you for doing that, mm -hmm. for hearing us and then responding in that way and demonstrating that um, our voice has value to you. I really appreciate that. Uh, and it it um, it actually makes me want to reflect that back to you continually. So it's um it's important that we do that. That's the basis of Fanaingatanga really for me. <laughs> so uh, tino pai. I The other thing I want to mention is that um, I can hear the voice of partnership in your kōrero. You you are. Um, I don't know if Te Reo Māori is something that comes freely with you. I'm not too sure of that, but I hear it in, in the things that you say. You speak inclusivity when you say that you mean it. And mm -hmm. so um, it gives me a snapshot of your practice within your um, space in terms of gymnastics with our whānau in that community. So um, thank you for sharing that with me, for demonstrating what you're saying, not just, you know, walking the talk as well as talking it. 
Uh, and yeah, no. I think you're right. You know, this is a, here we have an opportunity for us to hear what's happening to a particular group in our community, the way you've um, gone to try and really you guys have exhausted a whole lot of th ways and, and solutions you've tried over the years. You've, you've almost tried everything, I think. So yeah. you've, <laughs> you've tried we have. lots of different ways with lots of different vehicles. And I don't believe you wanted to come to us for this money, but you found yourself here asking. So thank you for coming and for continuing to talk to us and continuing to ask. I'm very glad to see this application in front of us. Kia ora. Kia ora Manawai. Thank you so much. That is just such amazing feedback. And um, yeah, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Always lovely to acknowledge our volunteers in the community, Jamie. Any further questions or anything for Jamie? No, then we'll move on and um, wish you luck with pub charity. Please let us know. It's very exciting. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes, we will. And um, hopefully it'll be um, through a van cruising through town. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good well everyone. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Oh, it's Lane. It's, oh. I'm sorry, Madam Chairman. Um, how big will our logo be on the side of the van? <laughs> Oh, it'll, it'll be there. Oh, I, it, it, I, yeah. I see some predetermination with our yeah, decision sorry, making later today. <laughs> Cheers. Bye, Jamie. Good Bye. point, though, Lane. Good point. Enjoy your day. Next up, we have um, Kitty Kitty Rifle and Pistol Club. We have Russell Shaw and possibly Tracy Wakeford with us to uh, speak to the application on page 88 with additional information on page 43. Plus you will have all received um, a couple of pages um, from Joshna uh, and an email yesterday. So welcome Russell, the floor is yours for five minutes. Thank and you very much. Uh, just on the, the additional slides, will they be shown on the screen or will you, you guys just flick through them as we talk? We well, have those, so Joshna can show them if you like. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Well, if we could get straight into it and go to the first slide. Thank you very much for your time this morning and for considering our application. Uh, I'm Russell Shaw and I'm joined by Tracy Wakeford, who's the secretary and treasurer for the club. Uh, Kerry Kerry Rifle and Pistol Club has been around since 1990, so 32 years. It's a safe and tightly controlled sport. We have more than 5,000 members nationally and it's the tightest regulated shooting discipline. Uh, if you do not shoot 12 times a year, you lose your licence and that's really at the heart of our application and why we need to move this on because we have lost our range and we are unable to shoot at the moment. Um, so we've got 35 members, they range from 14 to 79 years old and we were given notice last year that we had to move from a, a range that we've been in for the last 32 years. Kerry Kerry's grown uh, and there are subdivisions taking place around that, around that range, so we've had to move out. We host a number of visiting clubs and actually in the photos you can see one of the club members from Hamilton, Hamilton Pistol Club, uh, who came up to join us and had a shootout at the range. We plan to grow the club in the new location. It is a larger site that we have found. It uh, allows us both to have a 25 metre range and a 50 metre range, and that opens it up to uh, more competitions. You'll note with the Kerry Kerry Rifle and Pistol Club, and there's not an awful lot, uh, not a lot of rifle shooting that takes place at 25 metres. You can pretty much throw the rifle at the target and hit it from that range. Uh, and we also have the range available for cadets and others to use. So if we could move to the next slide, please. We've been going through a programme of work, and the photos you can see the existing building that we had, which we had to dismantle, that dismantling has now been complete. And then we've moved on to stage one of the, the new program of works, which is shown in the bottom of the, uh, the photos. That's a new range that we've developed. As you can see, there's a large amount of earthworks and drainage that had to go in place. Uh, also a car park and an entry road. Uh, we've acquired temporary storage uh, through the gifting of a, a container to hold some of our gear. And the range, the new range has been certified. Uh, all shooting ranges have to be certified. But it rains a lot up here. And that uh, that lovely piece of land you can see is a piece of mud at the moment. So we, the next stage for us is to metal it, get some metal down on that range. Uh, we plan to do that in the spring. 
them to put up some buildings. And then the next stage, stage two, is to extend it and put a 50 metre range in. The total cost of this project is $122,000. Next slide, please. Most of that work's been completed by members uh, and a lot of that cost date uh, has been in the civil works. You can see the digger there. We've had tremendous support from our members. We've got project managers, builders, and most importantly so far, a, a digger driver and drain layers because they've completed the civil works uh, and the cost of that to date has been about $50,000. The next slide, please. So what we have left to do, uh, we have okay. to get the metal down on the range. Uh, we've got to build a building uh, for us to operate out of, and that will be uh, completed by members and with a, a labour cost, and we've we've marked that out based on the uh, the $20. So we're looking at $42,000 to complete the work. We've got about just over $12,000 in the bank. Uh, the labour backs out because it's members, so a total cost of $22,000 to complete the next stage, and we've applied for a grant from FNDC of $20,000. As Jamie said, we we don't get money like rugby. In fact, this is the first grant that we've ever applied for in 32 years. Uh, we plan to apply for others for the next stage of it, which is a further $30,000. Uh, this has been self-funded today uh, by volunteers through their membership and through their through their voluntary labour. So thank you very much for uh, considering our application and for the time this morning. Lovely, thank you. Thank you very much. Tracy, was there anything you uh, wanted to add to that? Um, good morning, everybody. I'm Tracy. Um, I just wanted to reiterate the family base of our, our club. So uh, obviously shooting isn't the sexiest topic uh, around for a lot of people, but um, I'm a local psychologist and I can vouch for the fact that um, competitive shooting and practice like we do is really good for our well-being. It, it develops mindfulness and um, a community culture with the families that come and meet together. So I guess that's how we see it fitting in with this community board funding. Lovely, thank you very much. Uh, questions? Lane, I do see your hand is up. I just wasn't sure whether it was up from previous. Oh, Madam Chairman, I'm sorry, that was just my uh, my mistake on clicking my little hand, um, but thank you. I, I, Thanks. I'll ask you one question. Just where do you see the membership going? You're saying at the moment it's about 35. Where yep. would you see that membership growing? Well, we're, we're actually limited at the moment because of the size of the range. Uh, so we have... We believe that we could double that membership quite easily uh, if we open the range up for uh, for more shoots. And, and that that would include a rifle range. Well, the, the site that we're on is also uh, used by deer stalkers, and they've got a rifle range that goes out to 300 meters. So I think it's more appropriate for them to have the the rifle shooting on it, and we'll be limited to uh, to pistol shooting. Uh, but there are there are. Uh, five pistol shooting disciplines and we operate four of them so we have to do that on a rotational basis one per uh, per week per month uh, which makes it quite challenging for uh, shooters to get in those 12 shoots per year uh, so if we have a, a a better facility than the one that we've been operating out of it does allow us to uh, to have more shoots and to increase the number of uh, members through making it more available thank you Thanks, Russell. Right, Councillor Clendon, you have a question? Yeah, thank you. Yes, um, yeah, thanks, for that, Russell, and congratulations on having run a club for 30 years without having to ask anybody for money. That's a good effort. Um, I'm just curious, if I remember correctly, um, pistols have to be stored by the club. Um, I don't think pistol owners can store them at home. Is that right? And I'm assuming you've got, in the interim, some sound facility and that in time, this building will accommodate that um, security as well? Yeah, that, that's actually uh, not correct, David. The pistols are licensed to the individuals uh, and registered to get stands to vigils. The individuals can only take them from their home to the range and back to the, their home. Uh, oh. We do have a number of club pistols for new shooters. You can imagine you, you can't just turn up as a new shooter and, and someone hands you a gun to take home. So those no, are registered against armourers and those armourers again have secure storage in their homes and they transport them from the home to the club and back. 
Great, thank you. Yeah, my I was relying on my memory, which is never a good idea. But yeah, I am aware there are particular um, security issues around pistols, and I'm sure your club respects those very well. So good on you. Thank you. Thanks, David. It's actually an Olympic sport too, isn't it? Pistol shooting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Great. Thanks, David. Tracy, you wanted to respond earlier. Oh, um, yeah, as a secretary, um, I can vouch that we've already got a waiting list of people once the range gets reopened um, after the, the wet season um, wanting to join. And, of course, our numbers get increased when we add the youth groups that come and shoot on our ranges, like the Cadet Forces, um, which is a range of youth groups from 13 to 18 years old um, from around the district. Oh, that's great. And transport-wise, Tracy, I see you're moving from Kitty Kitty to Oramahoe, which is quite a shift. Is that going to pose any problems for um, for youth that you have at your club with transport and things? Uh, we, we're trying to develop like a um, carpooling idea from Kitty Kitty so that we're reducing the number of um, traffic going backwards and forwards as well. Excellent. Lovely. Thank you. Any further questions for Tracy or Russell? No, so you're free to go off and, and enjoy your day and we will make our decision a little bit later in the meeting. Great. Thanks Thank you very much. For attending. Thanks. OK, cheery. Right, next up we have Bay of Islands Yacht Club. Um, this is page 95 of your agenda with additional information on page 66. Charles Parker and is it Helen with you? Helen McNeil? Yes, that's correct. Helen McNeil's with me too. Thanks. Thank you. So the floor is yours for five minutes, Charles. Thanks. Thank you, Linda. Uh, so the Bay of Islands Yacht Club is uh, located next door to the Copthorn at the end of the peninsula at Waitangi there. I'm not sure how many of your members are aware of the club there. It's also adjacent to the Waitangi Wharf and is a, is a great venue, uh, often undiscovered venue for for events um, in our region. Uh, we, the club is uh, kind of straddled or, or affected by needing to provide access to the reserve at the end of the point. So it's also, uh, we, we have uh, public driving through the leased land or the, the leased uh, facility and accessing the, the uh, reserve which is kind of bordered by the Copthorn and the Bay of Islands Yacht Club and gives people uh, access to the water uh, and also to the views of the bay. So it's a popular spot. The Yacht Club has um, four areas of activity, uh, which are sailing and uh, predominantly dinghy sailing, uh, which is for both youth and adults. Uh, we also have a slipway facility, which is um, affordable to the average um, person and, and uh, a lot cheaper than some of the commercial facilities around the Bay of Islands. We have moorings uh, in the basin uh, just off the club uh, on either side of the Waitangi Bridge and we also have our club room facility which as I say is used by many uh, many groups and um, and also for club activities and events. Recently, we've had um, a quite disturbing sort of increase in uh, unsavoury behaviour, uh, thefts of club equipment, uh, assaults uh, in the club grounds or, or adjacent to the club grounds and near the wharf. And we've also had quite a bit of damage. Uh, recently, we, we built a new shower and toilet block with the help of uh, the TIF funds uh, through the council. And in the last six to eight months, we've had to replace the, the locks on both the male and female shower blocks twice because um, members of the public have come in and smashed the handles and smashed the locks uh, to gain access to the showers. Uh, so the club's been forced to look at uh, trying to boost our security, uh, both for the security of uh, club equipment and, and members' boats, uh, and also for the, the security of the, uh, the assets, so uh, like, like the uh, the shower block. It, it's an unfortunate sign of the times. Um, 
that it's become necessary to, to look at security. The option that we're uh, asking for assistance with is uh, we're working with Focus Pi here. So Focus Pi here have invested heavily uh, in a CCTV scheme throughout Pi here. And we're looking to add a couple of additional cameras uh, and hook them into uh, Focus Pi here's scheme. The benefits uh, for the Focus Pi here scheme are that we uh, will be able to see who is traveling onto the point and make sure that um, uh, any activity that's going on out there is, is covered, uh, but we also um, will be able to see what happens around the Waitangi Wharf and that will be uh, the, the installation that we're planning will have a link through to the, the Focus Pi here system and to the Focus Pi here monitoring which occurs um, uh, intermittently through the week. Yeah, so we uh, as as a club, we uh, work with sailability, so we have the, the disabled uh, sailing vessels. Uh, they're stored on our site uh, and also part of um, our activities. Uh, we also run the Koko Kaha Schools program uh, for local schools, uh, and our vessels are used for that. And the club itself is also used as uh, the main hub for the arrival and departure of cruise ship tenders and so the club facilities are used for uh, hosting and, and, and as a sort of staging point for tours that are going off for cruise ship uh, activities. One and, minute Charles. Yeah so that, that's pretty much um, uh, all I had uh, to, to cover and, and I'm happy to answer any questions that um, board members might have. Thank you. I've got member here. Is it Lane? You're muted, Lane. Sorry, Madam Chairman. Uh, my apologies. Um, Charles uh, Lane here. Um, I, I certainly empathise and sympathise with the problem. I was a past member of your club and uh, I'm currently involved with the Kiri Kiri Cruising Club. Um, and, and for some reason, I may have to recuse myself on voting for this. Maybe I'm too close. Um, but I do empathise, we've had massive theft and, and vandalism at, at our club to the point that we've actually applied to the, um, uh, what do they call it, revenue from uh, criminal activities that the council has where, where monies are um, confiscated back um, because we're up around $100,000, our costs for stopping vandalism. I would ask the question though, should not Far North Holdings be involved in this camera installation, given that the wharf is Far North Holdings? Uh, Far North Holdings do have cameras on the wharf itself. Okay. And they have said that they would uh, potentially assist us uh, with some of the costs, um, yeah, to, to fill the gap um, that, that exists. All right. I, and the cameras that you're proposing could read license plates and they're up to that standard? Uh, yeah, they won't automatically, they're not the AEP, uh, no, no. AEP no. but they will be, uh, yes, of a quality. They're, they're the same um, quality and uh, as the ones that are around Pi here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thanks, Lane. Manawai. Kia ora through the chair. I, I just wanted to suggest that I think Dave was before me and I don't want to push in line. Eh uh, Dave, is that correct? Can or you would hear? You'd be all right with me going. No, you go, Mana. I'm having problems un micing and unmiking or well, muting and unmuting here. So you go first and um, I'll carry on after you. Okay, I'm here. Uh, through the chair. Morena, Morena Fano, Morena Charles. Uh, I had a question around. Um, we, we've had a similar situation around funding. An application came to our board a few years ago from our Murua Kawakawa area to apply for CCTV footage. One of our questions was um, what happens to that CCTV footage if a crime has been committed? What happens to it? Does it link through to the police? Or is it put on social media and the like? 
Uh, my understanding is that the police uh, will request it and uh, so, so that, that the police can get access to the footage. And then the other area of monitoring is, uh, I think it's through uh, safer communities and community patrol. So uh, Paihia is setting up a community patrol that will do some monitoring at the Paihia police station and safer communities, which is based up in Kaitaia, uh, they are also doing some monitoring on uh, Friday and Saturday nights. Yeah, as um, Member Ian yeah, yeah. mentioned, uh, I think um, the Proceeds of Crime Fund is the fund that we in our community eventually apply to, to be able to um, have CCTV cameras put through Kawako and Moirua, or they're continuing to be put through and then linked up to safer communities. Um, and we also have our community patrol. And I know our Māori wardens have been across to Afi as well. Um, that's been reported on by Belinda into Pai here. So thank you. I just wanted to ask that because one of the things that sometimes happens is that CCTV footage in our public spaces, is all, it can be shared on social media. And that is um, not something that we support as a board. That's to be handled by the police and, and uh, the Privacy Act. Um, also, uh, it was an opportunity for our community to have a conversation. Sometimes um, these applications are around things like you mentioned in the application, discouraging antisocial behaviour. And so it's an opportunity to have a conversation around encouraging social behaviour. And that's the other part of this um, question around CCTV footage, is that what steps are being taken to encourage social behaviour, social inclusivity, and um, particularly because it is one of the hosting points for large groups of manuhiri coming from the cruise ship um, population. And I'm the board member that's delegated to the Bay of Islands Cruise Ship Committee. So it's something that I'm very keen to hear. And uh, I got a panui for the cruise ship committee meeting that's coming up from Irwin. It was scheduled to be held at Waitangi Marae. And the reason I raised, because that's one of the things that encourages positive social behaviour, is when you have these meetings in the home spaces in our community. So if I could um, just uh, end by kōrero by encouraging you to encourage everyone to have these kinds of conversations in our home spaces like Waitangi Marae moving forward. Charles. Um, kia ora. Just in, in response to that, a couple of things. Um, the original Paihia scheme was um, funded by the Proceeds of Crime. Um, just so a small addition like this, um, I don't think would um, get above the parapet with that group, but hence um, we've come to the community board. Uh, and just also to mention that um, Later on this year, we will be a host venue for the, the Waka Ama Nationals. Um, so that's uh, a big event that's coming up and, and we will be heavily involved with as, as a club. It's my, my final I'm participating as competitors in the competition, so I'll be there. Awesome. Yeah. Dave. Yeah, thanks, Charles, um, for coming to present. I, I guess um, both Lane and Manawai have um, mentioned some of the points that I had uh, my hand up for. Um, the other was, I guess, to the focus here. We've lost you, Dave. There is no sound, Dave. We'll come back to Dave. Um, Lane, is it Bruce or Frank with your hand up? Uh, um, uh, Madam Chairman, it's Lane again. Sorry, uh, Charles, um, I'll make a couple of points, um, possibly in support of the application, is that there's a large junior program that's run out of this particular club that benefits our communities, a wide range of communities, um, and which is slightly different than some of the other uh, sailing clubs in the area. Um, the other point that I, I would like to note, Charles, and I'm sure you, you've thought of it, but it, maybe I'd like to have it confirmed, that there will be a policy on what happens to the footage. I know our club has just gone through the process of writing a policy 
of limiting any video that's that's obtained from these cameras. So I'm assuming you will be doing the same. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thanks, Lane. Dave, can we come back to you? Have you got sound? No, sorry. If you can access the chat, you could put a question in there. No. OK. Are you assisting there, Josh? No, or no, we've I've obviously had having... lost Steve. Yes, yes, mm. that could get worse as the day gets on, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. OK, um, any Madam further Chief. Yes. OK, um, if you want to just close with Charles Parker. Yes. Time's up. Any further questions? That's it. Thanks, Charles. As you know, okay. we make our decision a bit later in the day. and. Um, Thank you to Helen for joining us. If you've got nothing else to do, feel free to, to go online and watch us. Enjoy your day. Thank Thanks, Linda. Right, now we did have next um, Teresa Wakeland coming to speak to Kitty Kitty Theatre Company, but she did say she was going to be a bit late. So Lorraine, um, we will actually move on to you for Whangaroa County Museum and Archives on page 109 with your yeah. additional um, information on page 135. So it's all yours, Lorraine, for five minutes. Thanks. How are you? Thank you. Morena, thank you. Thank you for considering our application. Um, I'll read mostly to get through quickly. COVID, COVID has had an, a huge impact on the income we usually receive. We have had a significant drop in um, visit numbers from at least 1,500 visitors per year, per year to 500. This has resulted in the revenue from our door sale takings and book sales to decline. However, our running costs remain the same. We have been successful in receiving fundary funding from lotteries, community for running costs. However, this will run out in October. I am the paid person here at the museum. Of my 12 hours per um, hours per week, at least six hours of that is used in applying for funding and, and the associated accountability and performance reports. Um, additional to that, uh, six volunteers keep the museum open and viable for the uh, for five days a week. Since COVID, the funders have had less funds to distribute and or have changed their priorities. Our most supported funders, i.e. Foundation North, Lotteries Community and Pub Charity also do not have the same amount of money. Recently, we have replaced our roof and upgraded our air conditioning units. These have been funded in part by successful applications and the remainder from our savings. We manage, but our rainy day fund has been reduced. Our museum fulfills the need for our community to have visit people visit the area, view local attractions, and therefore assist the local economy. We are significant to the town as an institution that is operating positively and is resilient in the face of challenges experienced by many rural townships. Um, the changes in the new school history curriculum is an opportunity for our museum to work with schools in our area. Um, if we, and finally, um, if we are not able to keep heritage museums like ourselves alive and thriving, they will not survive for future generations. 
thank you for considering our application. Thanks, Lorraine, and thanks for the wonderful job you do. Um, My pleasure. Questions for Lorraine? No, no questions? Um, it's, it is a great opportunity um, to work with schools coming up for you yeah. in the future and um, I guess heritage groups and the like. Yeah. So you hopefully you will grasp those opportunities, you know, yes. when they come along. And it has been difficult times for a lot of these uh, smaller facilities um, requiring funds for operational costs yeah. during yeah. difficult times. Um, yeah. I know you do struggle there, but... Um, yeah. You know, museums museums are our, our history, our past, yeah, totally. and, and we need to preserve them. Dave, do we have sound with you? Can you hear, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. All right, that's great. Um, Lorraine, thank you for coming to present. Um, I, I, I guess just um, just as a reflection, and it's, a, and it's always looking at ways that you could be supported in other ways rather yeah. than, than, than coming to us, and, and this is for yes. the councillors um, in this session, is that when I was a councillor, part of part of what we looked at, I guess, or we were considering was um, looking at rates remissions on on the sorts of um, organisations like your own, where yeah. that you know because I'm looking at, at the rates expenditure in your funding um, application, and thinking that if you had some rates relief <laughs> around that. Um, that in itself would be a, a significant contribution. So it sort of seems that we we could be almost um, subsidising the council, where the council could be actually subsidising organisations in the community like yourselves um, uh, a bit better. So uh, I, I guess my, my comment is just for um, Councillor Smith and Councillor Clendon um, and anyone considering being a councillor in the upcoming election, is to be able to consider how council might better support some of these for these community facilities um, that are struggling at the moment. Yeah, I have I I have to say that um, as part of um, doing this application, since I did that budget, we I do, I'm um, I wasn't aware that we actually do get a rates remission. It's not recorded in the, on the. Um, on our rates as a remission, it's just it just comes under other. But we do actually, since yesterday, <laughs> I realized that we do actually get a remission. The hundred dollars a month that we are paying is actually for sewerage. Um, Thanks for so clarifying that, Lorraine. Cool. <laughs> it was new to me. Thanks, Lorraine. Um, I just have a question. I'm not familiar with that that particular um, the land. It, is yeah. is it actually a council owned reserve? The classification of of the site is it sitting on a um, Bruce may be able to answer this one. Sorry, yeah. it's out of my area. Um, does it sit on? Is count? Does council own the land? I don't. I, my understanding is you don't. Okay, uh, but I can. We can I clarify that. I just thought you might know off the top of your head. Yeah. No, they don't. Uh, like, no, they don't. Council no, don't. They don't. The land. It's the same by the museum. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have any. The boundaries are very tight around the. Yeah, Northern they North. must be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's probably on the road, is it? <laughs> Yeah, it was on our playground actually. Yeah, no, I <laughs> okay. The car park beside it is, is council owned, but beside oh, it. you're surrounded yeah. by, by our interests. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. thanks, Lorraine. If there's no other questions, um, we'll make our decision a bit later in the meeting. You can go off and enjoy your day. Thank you, thank you, Kilda. thank you, Kilda. And finally, we have, I think we have now Teresa with us, um, Kitty Kitty Theatre Company on page 102 with additional um, information on 102 also. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. 
no problem at all. We saw your face pop up, and I did get the message that you were going to be late. So, yeah, I'll um, thank yeah, thank you, Catherine, for um, arranging my um, lateness. Um, and welcome, uh, Catherine. Yeah, re really, really appreciate uh, you guys uh, hearing me out today. Um, we, uh, on behalf of Kiri Kiri Theatre Company, would like to put on a production of Black Hatter. Um, it's called Black Hatter: The Golden Age. It's an adaptation uh, written actually by someone in Invercargill and um, he's kindly provided the script to us and we would like to put on a show. So um, just generally speaking, we want to put this show on because uh, our community really needs a win this year. We had a little bit of a little bit of a loss at the beginning of the year with our production of Macbeth, which was, just um, expecting to be uh, pretty awesome and epic. Uh, we had sell, sold out six shows, which was amazing. Um, and, uh, and it was incredibly disheartening when we were unable to perform in February as expected due to COVID in our community. Um, we have postponed that show to, um, to, to be in February 2023, and we have started uh, or restarted turning the uh, wheels on on that production as well. Um, so our theatre community is really, really keen to uh, put on a show this year, and Black at uh, the Golden Age uh, is our attempt at doing so. Um, we'd obviously like to put the show on at the Turner Centre. Uh, we love the Turner Centre. It's a gorgeous venue um, and it's lovely to perform in and we can get big audiences there. Um, our last show at the Turner Centre was The Sound of Music, which we received some funding from uh, Far North District Council's um, uh, community funding scheme, which was, um, you know, made it really possible for us to be able to do that. Um, Turner Centre fees are quite high and um, and the support from the council for us to put on shows is um, really needed for us. Um, so we thought Black Hatter would be just a brilliant show to put on at this time in the world because everything's a little bit dreary um, <laughs> and we feel like we need to bring some comedy to the world. Um, we feel like the demographics of um, Kitty Kitty uh, would really support and all the feedback that we're getting from everyone that we're starting to trickle out news to uh, everyone seems really excited about um black hatter too um i think we're going to have some pretty major um tickets sold hopefully sellouts again um yeah and so we're, we're intending on putting this show on in october uh we're also going to tour it uh down the line we're going to take it to whangarei um, and perform in at uh, the one uh, within the Whangarei Fringe Festival um, to send a little bit of our awesome theatre magic down there. Um, and it's a really great opportunity for our people to network down there. We've made a really nice connection with the Company of Giants and Laurel and Stuart Diviney. Um, and Laurel is also the uh, manager of the 116 venue. Um, I've also been in communications with um, Mark Osborne at Tiahu in Kaitaia, and um, we are intending on taking some performances up there as well. Um, I've also gotten into some conversation with the um, Rawani Hall uh, people. I don't know if we'll get this production there, but I just thought I'd mention that as well. We're trying to ex expand our our network and, and make some lovely um, connections uh, through theatre. But obviously the Turner Centre, we want to put four shows there. They're going to be big. It's over a thousand people that we expect to um, present our performance to. And yeah, we just love your support by helping us with those Turner Centre fees. Thanks, Teresa, and yes, sounds like an exciting show. Um, questions? I have a question from Dave. I'm coming. You can hear me? Hi, Dave. Yes, I can hear you. Kia ora, Teresa. Thank you for your um, presentation and that. 
Yeah, certainly the world is looking very bleak outside my window at the moment as well. So, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I just have a few questions. Um, so, um, well, first is on the, in the nature of the material that you've presented. So the, um, the statement of service performance, financial performance and everything is only up to 31st of December 2020. Um, I note that you put on two productions in 2021 that um, we were supportive of. Um, and so I'm a little bit a uh, little bit disappointed that I can't work out the impact that our, our supporters had and the impact of um, the two events that you were at, the, the two productions that you put on in 2021. Um, so that, that's the first reflection or question. Um, yep. if, if you... Do you want me to answer that now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Know. So um, for the charity services, um, uh, report is due on the 31st of June, 30th of June. Um, so I have the financial, rep our financial report is created um, according to that time frame. And so I didn't have 2021's financial report uh, created and um, by our accountant at this, at this, at the, by the time that I submitted um, the application. I do have it now, however, and it is, um, it is very favourable. <laughs> um, our numbers are great from last year, um, so I'm 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 sorry that it just wasn't finished or put together in time for the application. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. I mean, I just I just as a you know, if I was looking at this in the future, I'd like to have up to date information so I know what you know we you know as as part of our consideration of it. Um, yeah, I think um, it's just that the timing wasn't favourable. We didn't have the financial report for the pre previous year, but um, the Sound of Music was, uh, uh, just really quickly, was the biggest selling show that we'd ever had uh, in our uh, several decades of um, uh, being an organisation, and um, it was the biggest selling show uh, or production that the Turner Centre had ever seen also, um, most number of people through their doors across that um, uh, performance period. Um, so it was it was epic, is all I can say. Um, and the other thing, uh, Final District Council helped us with was to put on a director's workshop. Um, one of the directors uh, directed our um, and is still directing our production of. Um, Macbeth and um, and also is involved in Blackadder among several of the other members have been really active in uh, Macbeth and Blackadder as well. Cool. Just just one other question then um, around you're looking at taking your um, your production on the road um, to uh, Whanarei and to Kaitaia. The application that we're looking at the um, financials and what have you, does that apply just to the Kitty Kitty performance or does that apply to the roadshow performance, including Tiahu and uh, Whanarei? Yeah, it does include the the, the roadshow performance, I guess, in Whanarei and um, Tiahu, but um, without, um, if, if, if we weren't going to this Turner Centre, we would, we would not be able to um, put a show on in our own backyard. Um, my intention is to apply for um, some funding separately to put on the show at in Whangarei and Kaitaia um, to help with those venue costs and I'm asking for a Bay of Islands Whangaroa board to uh, look at supporting us in the costs for putting on the show at um, the venue that is relevant to you guys. Sure. Just I, I just one other thing. Sorry, because there was, yeah. there was there was quite a few things you've asked for quite a bit of money, and um, so consequently that does uh, does deserve a bit of scrutiny. So, um, sure. and the pot potential other funding sources that you've got um, quite a significant amount um, requested of the Dalton Trust, um, but quite lesser amounts from Creative Communities to Hiku and Fanarei District Council. Was well, the reason why that you've gone to them for lower amounts and come to the community board for a higher amount? 
Yeah, so, okay, so Dalton Trust, um, just really quickly, they have actually just informed me that they will not be taking applications this year. Um, so I think I will, uh, sorry, at, at this time, normally they open up around July and we can apply for funding for them, but they are deferring that till later in the year, um, which will mean that it will, Blackadder as a show will no longer be within there. Um, uh, time frame. So I'll be having to look at other places and I will be looking at the Oxford Trust who have been really supportive of our productions in the past just on that. With the community, um, uh, uh, the Tehiku and the Whangarei District Council, I'm applying for small amounts because they are in relation to the venue fees in those areas. Unfortunately, um, as you may have heard, on more than one occasion, Turner Centre is incredibly expensive for us little guys. Um, the Tiahu Centre is is much, much cheaper. I think it's about $100. Uh, oh no, it was more than that. It was a lot It was a lot cheaper than the Turner Centre anyways. And 116 was $120 per performance. That's where I got the 100 in my head. Um, it's just... The reason the reason I'm applying from this fund, um, the eight and a half grand, is directly correlated to the expense of putting the show on in our area. Um, Thanks, Teresa. Any further <laughs> questions from you, Dave? No, thank you. Sorry, I hope that. So helps. we have. That's fine, Teresa. Thank you. Um, next, we have David Clendon. Thanks, Belinda, and thank you, Theresa. I just want to congratulate you on taking on something like Black Adder, which is so well known and loved. Yeah, I think yeah. the second series where we met Bob, isn't it? One of my favourite characters in Black Adder. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, it is. I'd have to say that your track record's pretty good. The Sound of Music was an awesome present for a as a production from an amateur company that was outstanding. So well thank done, you. and we wish you luck. Yeah. Um, just to clarify you obviously under wages and salaries are zero in your budget so clearly the performers the um technical crew the support crew all working that's all voluntary isn't it that's their time there's no um, charge we, there we we contract yeah. out some services like mm -hmm. um our uh, um our musical composer <laughs> she pays a, she charges a very very minimal fee and i think i put it under um because it wasn't really a salary, it was like a, I can't find my budget this quickly. Um, oh, professional fees, perhaps. Yeah, that's what it would yes, be. Yeah. She's a professional creative. Music is her life, and her, um, her she gets paid for it as a living. Um, as a living. So, um, yeah, that's where I put that fee. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, Sorry, thank you. Yes, so predominantly it is a it is a volunteer production, and um, yes. you know the effort that goes in. Just as an aside, if you're ever looking to go a bit further afield, the Factory Theatre in Onihunga is one of my trust managers. So have a look at that. It, uh, if you want to get into the big smoke, you'd be most welcome there. We try and make it affordable. So good wow, luck with this. Wow, thank you, David. Mm. That's amazing. I'm taking note right now. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks Cheers. for that. Great. Thanks for that info, David. And Frank is next. Uh, Madam Chair, what I'd like to ask, at the time the application was put in, uh, you hadn't done your financial results. You have since done those and tell us that the results were very good. Had you had that information at the time you lodged the application, would it have been for as much or would you have applied for less? We would have applied for just as much. We wouldn't have applied for less funding. And at that stage, we had only had a, a draft version um, and the final figures hadn't been calculated. Okay, thank you. Teresa, just as an aside, um, would you be able to just scan the summary to Catherine or to, um, to so we can circulate when we come to our decision making? Sure. Would that be helpful with the questions that are coming out? Yeah. Yeah. Either to uh, Joshna or Catherine Truen, who does the funding. Catherine's with us today. 
Thank Great. you. Will do. And we have Lane, do we, or Bruce? Sorry, it always takes a while to get the mic on. Teresa, good morning. Thank you for your presentation. A couple of questions, if I may. On the um, expenditure, it comes up to about 100, um, 127,000. And if I take off the 80,000 for volunteer labor, I'm left with about 47,000. How, how many tickets do you plan on selling? Um, lots. Lots and lots. I was looking for something a little bit more definitive. Than Would lots. you like some numbers? Uh, yeah, maybe up, heaps. Uh, yeah. I'll, um, I'll quickly pull up my budget just here. Um, so somewhere around a thousand. I mean, but I don't know whether that's. Yeah, I mean, is so, it for, um, for? I've I've budgeted and and I'm well. I'm hoping to sell all of the tickets that we possibly can. Um, but I have. I'm hoping to sell 32, uh, 32,000, just over $32,000 worth of tickets. So that would leave you with a shortfall of about $15,000. Um, it all adds up in, uh, in my big budget. Sorry, obviously I was, I was, your, your form is I wasn't slightly- I to ask a hard question here. I mean, I was just, I was just looking at the numbers and I, I, I was, because I think you do three nights, is it? And one matinee, is that if I'm memory serving? Yes, that's, that's so, the intention. And the Turner Center is about 400 seats, is it? Is it 400 uh, three, 360. 360. Yeah. So you, you've got about 1,000 to 1,200 seats maximum that, you, that you can get. I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, it seems, from a quick cursory look, it seems to me like no matter what you get, you're going to end up with a bit of a loss here based on these numbers. Um, uh, unless there's other income that, that's not showing here. But that's all right. No, no, that, that, that's okay. I think, when, I think I've got 3,300 tickets is what I'm hoping to sell at a minimum across all of the shows. At the Turner Centre specifically, I'm hoping to sell. Um, that's a, yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, no, that's my absolute max. Divided. Which? Seven, I, 720 is what I've been working off um, to create my budget just to allow for any changes in alert levels or, you know, just to be a little bit conservative as much as I think that we will sell out. <laughs> um, we have to be real realistic. Hmm. Yeah, I, I also note there's not a great difference between the regular ticket price and the children's ticket price. I, I, we I, don't expect, uh, we're going to put a restricted um, age on it. Uh, we don't want to encourage children. It's not, the content's not quite oh. perfect for kids, okay. um, but, you know, teenagers and app, it will be appropriate for. Thank you for that. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I have no more questions. Ah, tricky questions. <laughs> That's all right, Teresa. Oh, you are to here to be tricky. Oh, I see you do offer um, a reduced ticket price for gold card holders as well in your information there, um, which is lovely. So um, anything else that, that you can think of off the top of your head, just make a note of it when you flick through that um, and we'll just deal with it a bit later in the meeting when we discuss the uh, funding application sure. if you can i know it's difficult when you're caught on the hop and you've got different screens open and, and documents so many and, tabs uh, yeah <laughs> but thank you so much i see no more hands up at the moment so um are we going to move on Teresa? and if you could flick that through to Catherine Truan, that would be wonderful and mm -hmm. we'll make a decision a bit later in the day and good thank luck you. with your show Thanks so much, everyone. Cheerio. Cheerio. Right, so we're moving on. Um, item 6.1, confirmation of the previous minutes. I will move the recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board confirm the minutes of the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board meeting held 2nd of June 2022 are a true and correct record. Do I have a seconder? I'll second, Madam Chairman. Thanks, Bye. Lane. Any amendments? I just wanted to query. Sorry. So, 
Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just was around the um, way that we had shaped the uh, three funding applications with the free tickets for gold card holders. I just uh, like to refresh my memory. So was it the case that both the mover and the second agreed to the the alteration or the addition of the um, the extra conditions? You are on seven point seven point three F. And once he's found a friend. Yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry, seven point four. Um the three B, sorry, three B, three C, um, and three D. Uh, three J. I don't quite sure that's sort of strange numbers here. <laughs> they were all dealt with individually. Yeah, no, they were, but we, that was part of the, the change. So the, 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 each item was moved separately, and then yes. um, we added the um, additional co uh, additional condition. I just wondered whether that was... Um, I'll just look at my script. The permission of the, the mover and the meet. seconders. What item was that for, Dev? We're looking at 7 point uh, B, C and J. Okay. Yeah. Right, so it was in agreement with myself and Manuela. That's right. I'm just 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 refreshing my and memory about what was what was happening there. And, and then there was some. Mm, so what what happened was um, they were all dealt with separately. One, two, and three. Uh, barring the amendment on, no, that wasn't the amendment, get to J. Sorry, we went all over the place, didn't we? J, okay. Monday matinee available, community services card holder, was Manuela and Lane. So now each, each one was done with its own um, mover and seconder, and that was, I'm pretty sure, due to the fact that the gold card issue was actually covered in one of the applications um, as already as a condition. Aisha. Good morning, everybody. I'll follow, just jump in. Um, so the amendments are written in a way that it reflects that the mover and seconder for each of those motions did agree to the changes. Yes. Um, but if you have a different recollection and you'd like us to recall them as amendments, then we'd need advice on who the mover and seconder were for the amendments. I think, yeah, I was just thinking clarity yeah. on that because I think I'd moved, the, I'd moved that it was amended, but it was agreed. I think, Madam Chair, that you agreed to add the amendment and to the seconders were happy with the amendment. I, I just wanted to check my the official recollection of those three it items. Was, it, it was the movers and the seconders happy to agree with each of those, which are, are slightly different. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, any more queries around those minutes? If not, I'll put it to the vote. Thank you, Joshna. I'm in support. Yes. We'll put Manuela down as absent. I think I'll deal with her apology via my text later in the meeting. Okay, Bruce, yes. Frank, yes. Dave, uh, yes. Okay, so that's carried. Thank you. Rachel. Sorry, Madam Chair, just for clarification, would you like me to verbally abstain for each item? Uh, no, Joshna, can you note that? Councillor Smith will abstain all the way through the voting. Thank you. Right, we'll move on to item 7.1. Chairperson and Members Report that the Bay of Islands Whangarara Community Board note the reports from Chairperson Belinda Ward, Deputy Chair Frank Owen and Member Manuela Gamur hornell Do I have a mover? I'll move, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Seconder? I'll second. Manawai. Thank you. 
and apologies from in-house um, and myself for Member Lane Eyre actually did submit a member's report which was omitted from the final um, draft of the agenda when we did the preview. So um, apologies for that, Lane, and that will be appearing in our next agenda at the beginning of August. <laughs> Any questions in relation to my report? I will take it as read. It might just be an opportunity here to note um, the Kitty Kitty White Paper Spatial Plan workshops that I have. Uh, I know there's been some questions and queries around my um, attendance of those um, and the exclusion of the Kitty Kitty members, um, board members from those meetings. Um, the last one I attended on the 16th of June. Um, is that the last one? I'm getting some echo from somebody. If you could mute, please, that would be good. Um, this is in relation to the um, the first meeting was mainly around the um, the spatial planning of Kitty Kitty, and in relation in particular to the um, the transport strategy or the transport data required um, in order to um, to move on and apply for funding and meet the um, the deadlines um, around the um, evidence-based data that is required to be produced um, for the um, possible bypass options or whatever is going to happen in that spatial planning, particularly within the CBD area. Um, this information, this was produced, uh, the meeting was called by, by Deputy Mayor and Court and um, we had, um, oh, my mind's gone with his name, um, Transport Man. Keith Kent. Keith Kent, Keith Kent. I always go Kent, Keith, Keith Kent. Um, actually um, presented to us the, 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 the requirements and the difficulty around getting the data together to actually submit for this. Um, this is going to actually come to to your meet, um, committee meeting strategy and policy, Rachel, on the 6th of September um, for approval to take a draft out to consultation. So um, they're pretty tight on deadlines trying to get their information together. So um, in this particular um, invitation group, is um, representatives from Vision Kitty Kitty, Our Kitty Kitty, and the newly formed Kitty Kitty Business Association. Um, and they are termed as, or referred to as critical partners. They're not actually um, the sole people being included in the actual, obviously in the consultation, but they are representative of several large groups in the community and therefore they were um, seen by council and, and by staff doing the work to actually be critical partners due to a lot of the work that some of them have already done. And as you know, our Kitty Kitty has submitted to um, the community board to the long-term plan and the annual plan processes. So, um, that I, I, the feeling I get behind this is is good. It's um, very inclusive from day one, and I think it is critical. So it's a really good um, term for the partnership and those involved to date, in the sense that um, that they they are the kitty kitty people. They are the next generation, and they will be involved and be the drivers um, of community groups within this particular. Um, future CBD planning. Um, there was talk around what to call it because that will sit inside the spatial plan. So you've got the spatial plan, which will guide our community board strategic plan. But within that, there will be a, um, they don't, can't have a township plan, they're not on a state highway, but there will be a um, CBD plan starting around the transport. And there was reference to that uh, in our workshop um, this morning in relation to um, Rachel's comments about trialling uh, things. Uh, Roger Ackers um, is to be um, in the loop and closing that loop with the community board, just so if you're wondering where we sit and where we're going to fit into that, um, that process. So our strategic plan will form part of the biggest overall spatial plan. Um, I think that's about all. I, I guess what the main points to be considered in, in this transport um, discussion from what I could gather after the first workshop was really 
in the spatial planning side of it to consider the overall big picture, which was addressed to us in brief around considering things like um, housing, creating um, spaces, you know, make it for people placing, for a people as a people place, I should say, and um, taking the, uh, due consideration to that wellbeing approach and sustainable development. So as we move forward, um, so I have just sat in on those um, as community chair, and we will be um, fully informed. Councillors are, are um, involved in this, and we will be fully informed um, from the, we'll be updated, but we'll be fully informed that from the strategy and policy committee meeting um, when that draft comes out for approval. Anything you wanted to add to that, Rachel? I've tried to sort of explain as best as I can understand it because it sort of hasn't really gone anywhere so far, but your your um, comments this morning were an exciting start anyway. Thank you, Madam Chair. Perhaps just a, a quick note with any good plan, it's like an onion, it has layers. Uh, and I think that at the moment, we're just trying to understand what those different layers look like, how they fit in with each other and what the timing looks like. Because obviously there are the smaller things that are right down on the ground that impact people on a day to day, right up to the big picture viewpoint of 30 years time with our spatial plan. So uh, just in the, in the process of trying to navigate and understand that. Thank you. Okay, so any questions in my report? No, so we will move on then to uh, Frank. You muted, Frank, sorry. Nothing to add, Madam Chair. Any questions for Frank? Cherry Park House is still moving along, which is great. Thanks for that. No questions, right. We'll take Manuela's as read in her absence. Uh, through the chair. Yes. I don't have my, I had a note and I should have mentioned it when you ran. Your, the, um, just, you know, the, in, in your report, it notes the lower marae in Waitangi. I think it's, that's Waitangi marae. I know it's commonly referred to as the lower marae and sometimes the whare runanga at mm. the Waitangi Treaty Grounds is yep. described as the upper marae, but I think our Waitangi marae whanau, um assert the name Waitangi marae for that marae. Mm -hmm. And as of yesterday afternoon, when I walked in the rain, um, the occupiers were still there. So um, oh, Doc, Doc are going through the motions of um, dealing with that. Rachel. Kia ora. Thanks, Manawai. Thank you, Madam Chair. There was a question that I wanted to raise with Manwala, but she's not here. So perhaps I might raise it with you and you might like to raise it with her. Uh, there is a comment in there around local procurement for the Russell Township and that she has proposed that Russell be a trial town to get town maintenance localised again. I think that it's fantastic that she's wanting to be really proactive in that space. And I'm hopeful, um, especially following the conversations that we had at the council level around the renewal of our current uh, contracts, I'm hopeful that perhaps between yourself as the board chair and herself, uh, there might be a conversation to link that into our contract and procurement people. Uh, to look at how that might be piloted in partnership with our current contractors. I think that it's great that Manuela is proposing to be really proactive in that space. Uh, and if there's a, an appetite at community level to try and achieve that, then I think that we need to nourish that and um, try and bring that to life. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel, and I will take that up with you. We have had a couple of discussions about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, any other queries? So I'll put that to the vote. Moved by Frank, seconded by Manawai. I'm in support. Yes, Madam Chairman, Lane in support. Yes, Bruce. Yes, Frank. Total goal. Yes, Dave. Thank you, that's carried. Move on to item 7.2. Oh, here we go. Um, just before I put this, I just would like clarification. Do we have um, the, the report writer or anybody there, Joshna? 
Uh, no, I, I don't see the report right here. Okay, so I just wanted to um, add the word private in front of name a private right of way because on page 49, 49, no, it can't be 49, I've written down 49. There is, when you read through the application, it's actually naming a private right of way, but in the recommendation, it just states to name a right of way. Just be with me a second and I'll see if I can find. I've written the wrong page number down. I think it's page 30, Oops. Madam Chair. Thank you. You happy with that, Madam Chair? No, I did find the word private. That under the staff assessment, it states right of way as well. It doesn't say private. Um, were you looking at another? Sorry, bear with me a second. I just think it's important to get these things right. Either it's a private right of way or it's not, but it was somewhere in here. It was mentioned. Did anybody else pick that up? I'm not quite sure why we got building information in that report. Uh, right on page, what am I looking at? 48, sorry, the very final page with the little box of um, the, on the naming schedule. It's clearly stated as a private right of way. And then the first line of the, of the location is as a private right of way. So I'm confident in the information that would have been sent out that it is a private right of way. Should we seek clarification on this item and come back to it, do you think, Joshna? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I'm currently chatting to Selina at the moment and I'll get clarifications. We can okay. come back. Thank you. So we'll leave that on hold. Sorry, folks. And we'll move to item 7.3, project funding reports on page 49. Right, we have recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board note the project report received from Kitty Kitty Gymnastics Club, Kitty Kitty Paddlers and Youth Line. Do I have a mover? Yeah. I, I'll move. Dave Manawai second. Any discussion around these? Got a hand up, Dave? Yeah. Um I probably should have asked Jamie about this before, but but that said, uh, I was a little bit disappointed with the lack of detail over the report back from the gymnastics club um, in terms of of uh, the reporting um, in comparison with a really good um, report from the paddlers club, um, and that so um, I don't I don't know what we do to encourage um, better reporting and whether that. Um, sits with staff to seek more uh, detail for us, but to me that wouldn't be a satisfactory report um, from the gymnastics club, and it and it and it concerns me that we're then going to be considering a funding application um, later on this meeting regarding the same organisation. So, Dave, this was just for to assist with their rent. Um, Catherine's actually online. She may wish to speak to it. She may have received um, more around this. Catherine, are you no, able to No, what me? you have is what we received. What further information would you like them to provide, Dave? Well, I guess that they talked about membership, but that doesn't talk about attendance. Anyone can have, I mean, we were aware even when we had discussions around maybe the squash club that they had a membership of, of a certain number on the, on the board of um, member air recalls uh, uh, some conversations yep. that we had, but actually looking at the actual active attendance. And I guess that's part of what I'd be looking at is, is just who benefited from our money during the period of time that it was allocated. Through the chair, would you like me to go back to them and ask them to submit a more full report and provide those sort of details? Uh, it's up to board members. Personally, I'm quite happy with the fact that we were just contributing toward rent. Um, there was a very, um, they did come and speak to it 
and it was quite a um, there was quite a bit of additional information. But if the board is of a feeling that we need to go back and request further information in relation to the um, project report received, what's the feeling? I, I, given that the the grant was for I think a fairly specific item, i.e., rent. Mm. Um, I, I'm, I'm not dissatisfied with this. I, I, I think they gave a much more detailed look in their application for the ban, which is in our other uh, additional information. I mean, it's the same organisation. It's the same 300 kids. Um, that that would be my only thing. But mm. but I, I I certainly agree with Dave that I think we need some some more structured format coming back to us to um, to see where our money's going. I, I would would agree with that. Sorry. Yes. Yes. I was I just think noting that page fifty three says that there's you know look alludes to deposit summary invoice bank statement. So we actually I mean we can't we're not being diligent at knowing that the that the money was spent on rent. And I think that, that that's our job as custodians of community funds to be able to um, to say to evince that and to be able to acknowledge that it's been you know it has been spent on what it said it was going to be sent. I don't think that's unreasonable. Okay, that's fine. That should show in the financials that are in the agenda um, today as well. But you, you're you're alluding to the fact that um, well, those financials will not be um, included in the in the report, Catherine. Will they? That will just be purely for board members' information, is what no, I'm trying to say. they're in supplementary yes. information. Yeah, that's right. So it will, still won't be public information day, but you want. You want that separate, reported separately, specifically showing, highlighting the rent? Yeah, I think if we if we've approved something for the particular purpose, there should be proof of that, even if it's a bank statement that shows rent payments and what have you. I mean, that's, sure. I don't think that's too big an ask. So I, you know, I, I, I'm not doubting that that they or anybody else, but I think that that same diligence applies to all of the amount, all of the mm. funds that we do um, grant. Mm. So there's substantial information. That information is there on page 29 of additional information today for their additional application. But what you're saying is you want to see it again? No, what I'm saying is that a, a, that a separate funding application is a separate funding application. And we're dealing with what so is you, in front of us yeah. on this item, as you as, as many times that you've, you've pointed out. So, so we need to have the right information attached to okay. this. I hear you. So you, you want to see the bank statements twice. You want to see those with that application as well. Okay. Well, no, the public needs to be able to see that in relation to this. So if they hadn't put a uh, another funding application and it's only coincidental that there's other information provided. The purpose of, of this one is to be able to ensure that they've reported back and provided evidence that their money has been spent on rent. Mm. I think During you'll this, find this that, that it was included. Yes, Rachel. Madam Chair, is that the information that's provided on page 159 of the additional information, which is the additional information for each of these project reports? Yes. Is that the information you're looking for, Dave? I wasn't looking for the um, bank statements of that, but I assume it will be if Catherine's put it in there. It doesn't go into the public arena, Dave. No, I think that it, and I think that it should be. I mean, that's just the transparency that we should be oh, providing around okay. that. That's all. Through the chair, we do not yes. put bank statements and that sort of thing in the public arena because there is too much information on there that could be used by those with nefarious purpose. I'll put it that way. Um, so bank statements and that sort of thing are never put in the public domain. Member Hookway, um, they are always provided under separate cover purely for the board's information. Thank you, Catherine. That says I understand it. Yeah. So are you happy with that response, Dave, or are you still wanting? Um, no, I'm not. I'm not happy with the response because just on the basis of what is available publicly, that there's no way that that, that people are able to have confidence that that um, there is accountability and transparency around the payments. That's all. I mean, if there are invoices, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused as to what page 53 is alluding to. 
Um, and, 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 and I don't think that it should have to be referring to something that the public can't see. We're in a public meeting and we're here to be able to accept um, the report back on that. So I, I think we're just making a, a bit bigger thing about it. It's, it's if the gymnastics gets uh, pays money and gets a, uh, a, a receipt or what have you on the invoices, then they could just provide that. That's all. Okay, so you want to see the invoice for rent? Is that commercially uh, sensitive, Chair, Catherine? Um, yes, I would Dave. need to ask them for that. David, sorry, Madam Chair, I'm, maybe I'm misreading this. We seem to be at cross purposes. There is mm. an invoice yes. on page 163 from the landlord to the um, to the club. Um, they've obviously yes. made no secret of the fact. I think we can assume that had they failed to pay their rent, they'd no longer be in the premises. Mm. I'm I always reluctant to yes. impose more work on a volunteer group who are obviously servicing quite a large membership of young kids in our community. It would, I mean, if I was on the other side of the equation, I would think I'd thoroughly um, complied with what the board requires, yes. which is to give a report on time with the invoicing and evidence of transactions and so on. I think it'd be a bit unreasonable to demand more than that. It would imply a lack of trust in my view. I think, Dave, my, thank, my thank you, David. This I information should be made publicly. Mm. What, what is the problem, um, Councillor Clendon, in making this uh, page 163 or page 162 of the additional information public? Well, are you going to generalise that? And is, it, is this going to be a change of policy? That no, it's not a such... change of policy at all, Councillor Clendon. Well, no, we just figure. heard from Catherine that, in fact, we do not make a habit of publicising no. these um, financial details. If there's going to be, I would suggest, the correct course of action would be propose a change of policy so that all of this stuff becomes public domain. Why would you make an exception for this one case? I think mm. you're misrepresenting what, what, what Catherine said. Catherine said that they don't make it, um, details of people's bank statements. So this is not a bank statement, it's a tax invoice and it shows a deposit summary. I don't think that there's anything that there's uh, other information redacted on the on page 162, which doesn't make the organisation vulnerable. Aisha, you've got a comment to make, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. I wanted to just... Um maybe food for thought that we could take this conversation offline and have a wider conversation about how yes. we want to ensure accountability around funding applications. I think if there's a question among the members whether or not they have been prudent in exercising or allocating the funds they receive via their grant, then the board have the option to choose not to receive information um, and do further investigation. Council staff, as I understand, don't conduct a full audit to ensure that people do as exactly they say they would with funding um, on a regular basis, but we can on an ad hoc basis if we have concerns. Yes. Thanks, Aisha. Okay, so we we actually did have in our workshop um, pre-meeting this morning a bit of a discussion around funding policy. So I can I can see a good workshop coming up um, for the new triennium in relation to the policy and funding, and that can be included in it, Dave. So moving on, I have, Dave, you moved that Manawai second. Um, any further discussion around this? I'm going to put it to the vote. So I'm in support. I'm in support, Blaine. Bruce, support. Frank, yes. Total go. I'm abstaining, noting the, the dissatisfaction with the level of detail from the gymnastics club. Okay. Right. So moving on, uh, that's carried. So I want to move back, sorry, not on, to item 7.2. Um, you will note there in the chat that uh, we have had confirmation that that is a private right of way. So I will put this recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangara Community Board pursuant to Council's road naming and property addressing policy number 2125 name a private right of way, ROW, Egret Way, that is currently addressed at 405 Kitty Kitty Inlet Road, Kitty Kitty, as per map A3640647. I'll move that with that amendment adding the word private. Do I have a seconder? 
You do, Madam Chairman. Lane. Thank, thank you, Lane. We'll just make that the motion rather than an amendment if you're in agreement after clarification. Yes. Any discussion around this? Dave. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to move that we let this one lie on the table um, in light of the draft policy that has come through. I've, I've read through the email correspondence, which is not presented in the most logical way. It would be better to have presented in a in a time sequence. But however, I do note that there is considerable um, concern from at least one of the, the people from the local hapu there, there who were consulted. Um, I believe that this is, um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, a uh, land of cultural significance around the inlet there um, and that the newer policy reflects the um, way forward on this. I'm not happy that um, whilst the hapu um, consultant had proposed amended names that the recommendations to the board are still um, the original ones. I noted that um, whilst the staff report talks about the roads being the names being used in other places they weren't in other places as weights or um, what have you and so we do have a number of um, roads in the district um, that might be Kotuku Road rather than Kotuku Way or, or something like that so I, I'm, I'm not you know that I haven't um, supported some of these issues around the naming of roads private or or public um, until there's been a good process. I don't feel the process in this one is sound. Um, and so I would prefer if we could let the matter lie on the table until it's re it, and refer it back for better resolution. Thank you, Dave. Um, I note on page 30 that um, the, the uh, hapu natira here um, were asked for feedback and actually have not responded which has been um, the way that that's actually been quite common as of late. They have not been responding. It's been a bit hit and miss. Manawai. Here we go. Sorry, I'm unmuted. Oh, kia ora. Yeah, I, I think that um, perhaps one of the reasons why it's been a bit hit and miss is really summed up quite well in the email on page 43 from Ian Mitchell, where he says, Hi Natalie, actually we are feeling used and abused by FNDC and NRC and so we do object to the use of our ancestral names. We suggest you use a European name such as Don Reed Way, the last European to live on the island, or Governor Grey Lane who took all this land under the 1858 Bay of Island Settlement Act. Regards, uh, kind regards Ian Mitchell. So I think that can, might be some reason as to why there's been um, a, a a less than um, keen response from our tangata whenua. I do know on page 30, the improvement in the in the um, writing in the grid, um, which was something that I had mentioned last time. So ngāmihi kia te Selena, if you're in the room, um, and for Glenn for suggesting that we mm -hmm. actually just say what happens. An email went out, te mea, te mea. So I'm glad to see that improvement yeah. is recorded on page 30. Um, but but yes, I, I think that, you know, the tangata whenua have spoken in this case. It might not have been um, received by uh, is, our... Is Ian Mitchell speaking the... on behalf of Manawai? I don't know Ian uh, Mitchell. I, so I didn't say is he representative? Re I didn't say a happy representative. I said no. the tangata whenua. Tangata so, whenua. Um, yeah, I, I, I would, I'd be supportive of uh, leaving it to, uh, to lie. I like the korero about the new draft policy. I liked it, so... So what I'm happy to second an amendment to leave to lie um, if that is um, on the table. So what you're suggesting is that um, we wait for the new policy and not deal with road naming? Uh, no, that... I was just uh, saying that I was keen to support Dave's court at all. If he's going to put an amendment, I'd be happy to support it. Dave, would you like to word your amendment, please? I'm just bearing in mind this is a the end of a process of a subdivision application and people will be waiting for their road naming to come through. They cannot get their resource consent as a condition of consent. And I'm just wanting to make it, I'm just wanting to hear clarity for, uh, re, in relation to the amendment as to whether we are asking to put road naming on hold or just the specific subdivision on hold. 
So, Madam Chair, as we've discussed many times, that the resource consent application process requires the naming to be addressed at the beginning of the process and not at the end of it. And I'm quite tired of having to um, address something under urgency because it's now being held up and it's being done at the last minute. So, um, the, the wording is just that I'm recommending that this be left to lie on the table um, pending uh, or to be referred back to staff for better resolution. Um, to answer the question that my understanding is that Ian Mitchell is um, Te Uri Tanifa Hapu member um, and that is the reason why they've been consulted. Um, in the absence of a staff member coming to speak about the process that's gone on, we can only go by the evidence of the email trail that's in front of us. Okay, can, so, you, just, can you just word an amendment please for Josh now? Sure, that the Bay of Islands uh, Whangaroa Community Board refers um, the application for the private right of way naming back to staff for further consideration. Aisha, thank you, Dave. Aisha, you wanted to comment? Thank you, Madam Chair. I guess we're kind of in a bit of a sticky um, position where we don't, the staff are acting within the existing policy. Um, so I'm just a bit cautious about what, if we say that it's just for further consideration, I, I think without the staff here to provide a response that you would probably get the same information. Mm. Because that's what staff yeah, have year. assessed through oh, the existing policy. Then my sentiments under that the existing the policy will re is going to remain the same, but it's based on the corridor I heard this morning. It's about how we do the things we do. And so this is an example of trying to access that how is what why it'd be in support. So I guess I'm concerned that, that actually the emails state from the other people who were consulted that they came up with Pukitutu way, Kotuku way and what have you, but none of that was considered. And whilst Ian has been um, obviously frustrated with the um, what he's considered as the, uh, the uh, manner in which both FNDC and F NRC has dealt with issues in that part of the whenua, um, the other members consulted have reflected back as to what could be the case, but it's not, and it seems that, that it hasn't carried through to the staff recommendations. Okay, Joshna, would you like to read uh, what Dave's amendment, please? Or can we put it up so we can see it? So I'll read the amendment that the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board refers the application for the private road naming back to private right of way road naming back to staff for further consideration. If I change Dave, that last word to from consideration to further consultation with um, Mana Whenua. Sorry, can you just repeat that, Dave, with? With further consultation. With Manu Whenua. With Manu Whenua. And Manu Whenua, sorry. Manu Whenua. Can you please spell that for yes, me? Yes, M-A-N-U. Yeah, M-A-N-U. Yeah, not Manu Gerd, yeah. Fana, W-H-E-N-U-A. It's one word, yeah? Oh. Yeah, it's one word. Manu Whenua, okay. Okay. I think what we're looking for as a board is some clarity that there's been good process. This doesn't look like good process to me. Thank you, in my opinion. Frank. Okay, um, Madam Chair, I'm going to need a yes. mover for this amendment. Yes, we, Dave moved, Manawai seconded. Frank has a question. Sorry, a mover for the amendment. Dave Hookway and Manawai Wells. Frank, did you have a question? Sorry, you're muted. I was going to ask. I was going to ask Madam Chair whether we had a seconder that's been dealt with. Thanks. 
Manawai, you seconded. Can I just confirm Aye. that? Thank you. Right, Manishet. so I'm going to. Do we need a division for this? Yes, I'm going to put the amendment to the vote. I'm against. Lane, you're muted. Lane against. I'm against. Frank against. Manawai, Dave, so. Manawai. Manawai? I'm I'm Taitoko, I'm for. Dave? Yeah, I'm for as well. So the amendment's lost. So I'm now going to put the original motion moved by myself, seconded by Lane to the vote. Bruce, I'm in support. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Bruce. Bruce. Lane? Yes, I seconded the motion. Frank, yes. Manawai? Against. And Dave? I'm against, and I'd like it recorded that I have serious concerns around the process that has gone into the report and the options presented. And I would just like a note to make a note, but I'm not going to record it. It's just it's moments like these where we lose ourselves, actually, Fano, <laughs> and we get forced into making these decisions that actually go against our identity and in, in some of these communities, particularly our Tangata Whenua community. I just wanted to have that noted. I don't need it formally noted, Jordan. Thanks, Manawai. Right. So now the um, the motion that becomes a substantive motion. So I'll put that again. I will move um, that the motion become the original motion become the substantive motion. Do we not just do that, Madam Chair? Is that not what we last voted on, the substantive motion? No, we voted. We voted on there, uh, and I added the word private, oh, right. and that becomes a substantive motion. Uh, yeah. I'm moving. I'm moving that. Do I have a seconder? I do. Yes, Lane. Lane. Okay. I'm in support. I'm in support. Go ahead. Yes, Bruce. Frank. Right. Yes. Too fast for me. Abstain. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you go on holiday, Josh. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so Bruce said yes. Frank said yes. Manawai is abstaining. Manawai, abstaining. Are you? Yes, Manawai. I'm abstaining. And Thank Dave. You. No, I'm against it, and I'd like the same reason recorded as for the um, earlier motion. Sure. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Right. Funding applications. Is everybody all right? Oh, so I've got a hand up. Aisha. Good morning. Me again. Yes. Um, so I thought, well done, Madam Chair. I just thought I'd point out um, that understanding orders, and sorry, we were a bit slow to provide the advice. Um, if you're passing an amendment, it can't defeat the original intent of the motion that's already been moved and seconded. So um, in future, an amendment like the one that Dave just put should have been foreshadowed and then put to the table right. if the original motion was defeated. Right. As a direct. OK. Thank you for that, Aisha. I still get extremely confused about all of that, but thank you. Right, moving on now, do we want a, a comfort break? Before we get into the funding applications? Is everybody happy if we just get into these? Why don't we have a short coffee break, Madam Chairman? 
Yes. Okay. We'll have 10 minutes. We'll be back at five past 12. Oh, Very good. Thank okay. you. Okay.
Right, welcome back. And we are now moving on to item 7.4, the funding applications, which I will take individually. Starting off with, um, I'll put the first one. The, the, the Bay of Islands Whangarau Community Board approves a sum of $17,000 plus GST if applicable be paid from the board's community grant fund, community fund, sorry, account to Bay of Islands Animal Rescue for costs towards 2022-23 animal desexing program 2022 to meet the following outcomes. Communities that are healthy, safe, connected and sustainable, proud, vibrant communities. Do I have a seconder? Yes. Bruce. Thank you. Now, I'd just like to point out the reason um, that the Bay of Islands Animal Rescue have not come to speak to us today in our public forum section, as they did present to us at great length at our June meeting at the centre in Kirikiri last month. And um, this is, uh, as you will see, the um, they have been um, requested to revisit, or we, we requested that we re revisit the application. They were granted $4,000 um, at the last meeting and they had actually applied for $21,000. Dave, I have a question from you before we start. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the question I wanted to ask related to why we don't have any other financial report um, that normally um, accompanies our um, agenda to let us know the state. I mean, I, I, I guess I have read at the, the top of page 68, the um, three sentences there um, as bullet points, but I'm wondering why we don't have detailed financial information um, in respect of the state of our funding at the, uh, our funds at the moment. You're referring to the new financial year? Oh, yes, I am. I'm, well, I'm specifically referring to We've the lack of a financial report in the agenda. I don't whether it's financial year, Matariki or Christmas. I don't even really care about that. I want to We've know. Catherine Truham with us. Catherine. Um, so through the chair. Yes, thank you. It, <laughs> this is not a report I prepare. You're talking about the statement of accounts. Yes. Um, it is the end of financial year and it usually does take some time to wrap that up. Um, I, All I can do is ask them when to expect it. Um, the figures I have given you are for the start of the new financial year as it stands on the 1st of July 2022. So that is the amount of money that you have to grant for this financial year. You did fully expend your budget as at the meeting of oh, yeah. mm -hmm. 7th of June, I believe it was, or at yes. the start of June, um, <coughs> in the 2021-22 financial year. Thanks, Catherine, and that is correct. And so we will get that in our next agenda. Rhonda um, has something to add to that. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, thanks, thanks, Rhonda, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll see a, a comprehensive report in August, um, summing up that last financial year day. Manawai. Kilda, I just want to make sure I've got the terms right in my head. This is this is coming back because it's a request to revisit the application in a different financial year. Correct. Yeah. And through yeah. the chair, it was a request of the I board at the, the last meeting. I concerns around that via email mm. um, with the respect to the Hundertwasser Wasser application, where it was not deemed that it could be revisited. Um, but I know we have two applications today that we are revisiting. So what we request, sure I think there is a difference that, there. That we, we requested can revisit an application over different financial years. I just through the chair, would Member Wells like me to address that issue? Yes, please. Maybe further clarification is required. Oh, okay. okay. At the last meeting, it was confirmed that we weren't able <coughs> to do that. I okay, so it, the difference and then I witnessed it happen, and now it's this is it happening. So I really don't need any further.
clarification <laughs> other than the words that it is possible to revisit an application made in one financial year in the next financial year <laughs> and to grant further funds. And I got that clarification today, I think, I believe. Okay, well, Member Wells, if I may just throw in my two cents worth as well. Um, with that application for the Hundavasa um, to Hononga, um, that was the 3077 that the board granted for the ticket centre conversion of the old bank vault. Um, that funding was originally granted by the board at the final meeting in June of the 2020-21 financial year because otherwise the funds were going to be lost. And the resolution that the board made was that that funding would be granted subject to a funding application being received. Um, that funding application was purely to back up that resolution. It was not a further request from the Tunhongan Hononga team, and they have never actually contacted us and asked us to either revisit the application or provide further funding. They are fully welcome at any time whatsoever to make a further application for the board to consider, but that has not yet taken place. Uh, through the chair in response to that comment, because I have sent around <coughs> four or five queries as this conversation has evolved, my original query was actually, is it possible? And I was told it wasn't possible. I used that as an example. And so you can imagine my surprise when I see two examples showing it is possible. I understand that there were some differences. One was that it was a placemaking um, application. And later, when we look at the list that I requested of granted funding applications, we'll see that the funding for that 100 bus application, while it was granted in 2020, it's been uplifted in 2021, and it shows on our list as being granted financially in 2021. So there are just some questions that were important for me to ask because they were coming from my community, and that's why I have asked them. Thanks, Manawai. So are you yeah. now clear around the difference between us requesting an application to be submitted and people submitting applications under their own? I have been clear from okay. the start. Right. I don't believe our board was okay. clear and these questions were needed to be asked so that we could be clear because there was a perception in the community of bias and prejudice. And so when I've asked the question, it's so that we provide the evidence that can be observed by the community that would reveal if there was bias and prejudice or not. So I've, what I'm doing is asking for the, the evidence in our processes <clears throat> and asking us to evaluate it. It's not that I'm seeking the answer myself. Our role is to be an advocate for the community. And these are some of the things that have come through from our community. And what they do is these questions, when they go unanswered without a clear response from our board, what they do is they feed into the breakdown and this competitiveness between subdivisions, with some of the corridor coming out saying, Kitty Kitty gets everything, Pai here gets everything, Russell gets everything. So asking for that evidence, <coughs> clarify that for our community, how these decisions were made why these things were treated differently. Because while there were funds left over in 2020 financial year, my understanding was that we don't have the power to allocate. That's why um, an application needs to be submitted because it would be treated as if they applied for that amount. Now we allocated $4,000 to the Bay of Islands Animal Rescue and we are now revisiting the application to provide another 17,000. So there's, there's a lot of variability in our approach. So it's also asking that question around what is, do we have an approach or are we just winging it? Uh, Ma Madam Chairman, th there's a couple of generalizations made here in this discussion and through the chair, I take some humbrage at constantly being told that Kerry Kerry gets more than anybody else. Possibly next time we do a graph or a review, we should look at the number of people 
and or the rates paid in any particular ward. Before yes, we start like, taking yeah. oh, And sorry. can I just, you, well, I totally agree. Can I just stop this, com excuse me, I'm just going to stop this conversation. Manawai, I'm asking so for, very... Manawai, thank you. Um, I'm asking for this conversation. Frank, you have your hand up. I actually have got a recommendation on the table here, and we have gone off on a tangent over um, desexing of dogs. <laughs> and the Bay of Islands Animal Rescue. So I'm going to go back to the recommendation. Frank, if you're going to talk to the recommendation, I'll take you next and we will have the discussion in relation to the ward breakdown when we get to the item in the agenda. At the moment, I'm dealing with funding applications and I do believe we've gone off track here. So Frank, um, yeah, yeah, Madam uh, Chair, open just, to you, please. Can I go back to our minutes of our last meeting um, on page five? of the minutes. Frank, sorry, you're, you're mute. muted. Yes, yeah, sorry, Frank, you're muted. My mistake. Yeah, sorry, Madam Chair. If we, Item... go back, if we go back to our minutes of the last meeting, 7.3D on yes. page five of the minutes. There was a resolution moved by you, Belinda, seconded by me, that we approve 21,000. There was an amendment moved by me and seconded by Lane that we approve $4,000 and that the $17,000 be considered in the new financial year. Yes, correct. And what we've said is we are approving 4000 and in the new financial year, we will consider the balance of 17,000. It's not a case of a reapplication here. It's us deferring, making a part decision and deferring the final decision until this meeting. So it, it's not. Because we only had $4,000 to allocate. In this case, to a, a second application or not in the case. Um, Manawa is talking about of us not accepting a new application. What we are considering now is not a new application. We deferred our final decision on this from last meeting to this meeting. And that's what we're now doing. That's and correct, Frank. This was and hence my decision not meeting. to request them to come and speak to the application. Can we discuss this in the funding applications, please? Right. So I'm going to put the. Um, Recommendation moved by myself, seconded by Bruce. We're unmuted. Um, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. May I just ask a question? Just um, yes. nothing to do with funding, I assure you. <laughs> no. I'm just curious. Um, the, the recommendation talks about um, supporting the animal desexing program. Yes. The, um, the document only talks about dogs, but would they be able to do desexing of cats as well if they choose? Mm -hmm. It just comes to mind because I know Whangarei, our colleagues in Whangarei District, have mm. actually made desexing and microchipping of cats mandatory, I, I believe, yes. which I yes. personally think is a brilliant idea given the damage cats do to our bird life in particular. But I was just curious to know if these folk, if they so chose, it's up to mm -hmm. them, would be able to use this money to desex cats as well. Watch your hand up. Uh, Madam Thank Chair, can I just deal with that point of Councillor Clendon's? David, yes. if you look at our yes. amendment, we talk about the desexing of animals, not the desexing of dogs, and they do do both. Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, you're dead right. Yes, the um, the recommendation is open, but I notice in the supporting information, mm -hmm. there's only reference to dogs. So it's good to yes. clarify it because they are. It is up to them if they choose to put the money to desexing cats. There's no barrier to that, is there? No, no. In fact, David, that was discussed with them, as I recall, at the last meeting. That very question came up, and they did say yes, we do cats as well. Oh, excellent. Thanks for that, Frank. I wasn't at the meeting, so that's helpful. Okay, so the money's not specifically for dogs, but it's for animal rescue towards desexing. So any any further questions around discussion? They're not here to answer anything, but if there's any questions in relation to this desexing program and the $17,000. Yes, Frank, I'll your hand's still up. 
sorry. I'm just Frank. revisiting my question, which was originally, um, this is a request to revisit an application. It's not a request, it's, it's our. Because when Matariki applied in a similar fashion, we were told it was a new application. So that's one of the reasons why I raise it today. It's, it's a revisiting of it's not an application, <coughs> not a new application. Did you not listen to Frank earlier on page six? No, I did. What I'm saying is in terms of our process of granting the funding application, and this is coming from my subdivision of this application, oh. my understanding. So I'm just making sure that we oh. have our words right. We understand that this is revisiting an application. Is that correct? Are you doing it? We have, if you, we are referring to the resolution only moved at the last meeting on page 17 of your today's agenda. Is that your answer to my question? Yes, to be considered in the new financial year. Thank you. It's, that's, it's, that's my question. I'm not, I'm not sure what you're getting at here, Manawai, but this is not the correct forum to debate it. We can have a workshop on it. It was explained to you at the workshop pre-meeting in June, the difference over the Tahongana application. We're not here to discuss um, this right now. You can bring it up when we discuss the funding agenda item further on, the breakdown Kilda, that you requested. Okay, but, but at the we're moment we're trying to get I was a funding. I about it. Please refrain from any further comments in relation to it until we get to the breakdown of the funding. We're trying to get the funding applications dealt with now. Thank you. Right, so any questions, Lane? Uh, no. No? I don't have any questions. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, that, that wasn't my hand. I, I apologise profusely. That's fine. No more comments around the Bay of Islands Animal Rescue Desexing Program. If there isn't, I'm going to put this to the vote. I'm in support. Right. So am I, Lane. Bruce is definitely in support. Frank in favour. Tony Toko. Yes, from Dave. Dave. Okay, so that's carried. Are you Man Manawai to Toku? Yes. 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 yes and Dave is there? Yes. Yes, yes Dave. Me. Yes. Yeah. That's carried. Thank you. Right, moving on to B. Approve the sum of $12,500 to be paid from the board's community fund account to Kitty Kitty Gymnastics Club for cost towards purchasing a van to transport children to gymnastics. Do I have a mover? Lane? Seconder? Bruce? You will note that they have requested 25,000 and the recommendation that has come to us is for 12 and a half, for half of that amount. I was moving the lower amount, Madam Chairman. Yeah, that is the recommendation, but you'll find on page, you'll find that they actually did request 25, yeah. but the recommendation is for 12 and a half. Discussion around this? You had Jamie come back and talk again this morning. No, I'll put it to the vote. I move, so I'm a, a four. I'm in support. I'm in support. Bruce. Frank in favour. Bruce. Total call, and I just wanted to note that I'm, you know, they are applying for more funding, but if they don't get it and they would like to return, then I just want to say that they should return to us for more funding. I'm Manuai, what's your vote, Manawai? Total call. That's a yes. And yes, Dave was Total call means to support <clears throat> in Iroti Te Reo Māori. So total call. Thank you.
Right, moving on to um, Kitty Kitty Rifle and Pistol Association. Approved the sum of $10,000 be paid from the board's community grant fund account to Kitty Kitty Rifle and Pistol Club for costs towards construction of a shelter. Do I have a mover? <clears throat> Everybody's frozen. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Madam Chairman. Oh, okay, sorry, I think I might have frozen. Um, so I just moved the $10,000, the Kitty Kitty Rifle and Pistol Club. Do I have a seconder? No. To get this on the table for discussion, do we have a seconder? I'll second it to get on the table. Thank you, Bruce. Discussion around this? <coughs> no hands Chair, up. I, I, I guess if, if somebody needs to speak, but I think, unfortunately, their membership is so low, um, regardless of the activity or anything else. It's just the number of people that are going to benefit is substantially low. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I struggle with this application. Could I just add that to that, Madam Chair? Um, we should be looking at the community well-beings from our decisions. And I've got to be honest, I struggle to see where there is a significant community benefit from us giving um, $10,000 to this organisation. Mm -hmm. No other comments? I just would like to comment that I think it's very unfortunate um, that the club had to actually relocate due to the fact that the property they are situated on is a becoming a large subdivision and um, they had to find alternative an alternative site and hence the fact that they've had to try and re-establish themselves. So, um, I do have some sympathy there um, for the sport and uh, what it does provide to the, um, I mean, they put a lot of volunteer, huge volunteer hours into their relocation and to their club and they've never come to us in the past. So I just wanted that noted that I felt that um, from a community perspective and unfortunately being pushed out of where they are to a degree that, um, that hopefully they will be able to continue to operate as a club and provide that service within the Bay of Islands area. Right. No further comment. I'm going to put that to the vote. I'm in support. Against. Is that Lane? Yes. Sorry, Jim. Against, Bruce. Frank, against. Against. I was against. Mills is against. So that's lost. Dave is against. Sorry, I thought that was you, Dave. So say, say this again, sorry. Bruce Mills said he was for, and then now he says he's against. What oh, is I it, Bruce? Four, against. It's against. Against. I was against. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's carried. Lost. Right, moving on, Bay Islands Yacht Club. <coughs> Approve the sum of $3,235 to be paid from the Boys Community Fund account to Bay of Islands Yacht Club for cost towards CCTV to link into the Pi here system. Do I have a mover? I'll move now. Seconder? I'll second it. Okay. Thank you. Discussion around this? It's unfortunate that it's called for, Madam Chairman, um, but I can see their arguments and, and I think we are going to see more of this probably, regardless of whether it's a community group or a club. I can see more cameras uh, and I, I don't relish it. I, I actually find it abhorrent, but that's all right. 
Yes, it's very unfortunate what's happening. I think that the the one thing with this particular application um, is the fact that um, the process of crimes funds, the police worked very closely with Focus Pie here to get a really good um, recognition service between Opua and Haruru Falls, Watia, and these cameras will link into it. So the bulk of the work and the cost has been done and these will feed into those cameras. So um, having that network, unlike some of the others that we have funded in the area that are not feeding back into or tied into the main network, um, and I think it's something we should consider in the future with funding of our cameras, that, that they actually are tied in so that, um, that they are being fed through to Kaitaia and through to the, um, the, you know, involving the community patrol people and the, and the eyes of, of those that are monitoring them. Manawai. Kia ora. Um, when I see applications like this, it does remind me of when Kawakawa came to ask for $10,000 to install CCTV cameras throughout the township of Kawakawa. And I know this is a small part of that community area, but I am supportive of this application and the amount that they're applying for, um, because it also opportunity to open the discussion around the discouragement of antisocial behaviour, but also the promotion of positive social behaviour and being a bit more inclusive. And I feel that this group of people are trying to be socially inclusive, as well as um, putting measures in place to protect the assets. We are, our community Thank is you. the biggest asset, our people. <laughs> Kia ora. Madam Chairman, could I add something? And I don't want to change the resolution or anything else, but it, it, given current experience of mine with another club and video, I think at some point we need to, if we're going to fund these items, we need to insist that there be a policy regards to the video collected. And we've just done it for our club because uh, it shouldn't be available to everybody. It shouldn't be available to every club member that wants to see whose car came down there or whose wife was running around with someone on the <laughs> foreshore. Um, so I just think one of the things we need to build in at some point is that there is a reasonable policy with regards to viewing of the video. <coughs> I don't know how we yes, do I, that. I think in this particular case that goes without saying because it's part of the network that has yeah. already been set up um as charles said with the safer community and safer communities based up in kaitaia and um i wasn't aware pai he's obviously um resurrecting a community patrol that's based in kitty kitty so obviously pai here is um he said that they were setting one up which which is news to my ears but great that they're getting back into it catherine you've got your hand up I was just going to say, I know that Tom Frost is working, he's part of the Nothing But Net strategy um, team. They're working with um, CCTV initiatives around the whole of the far north at the moment. And I know that when the funding was granted to Kawakawa, part of the resolution was around where that footage could be released or used at the time. That was part of the actual resolution that the board put forward, that it was only to be released to the police and not on social media unless it was through the police. I think that was how it was worded at the time. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the conditions we put on. Okay, any more discussion around this? I'll put it to the vote. Moved Lane, seconded Manawai. I'm in support. I'm in support. Bruce in support. Frank in favour. <coughs> Total call. No from me. Do you want that recorded? Oh, it will be anyway. Do you want that noted in the minutes, Dave? Well, it's recorded um, by division anyway, so it says that I was against yeah. it. I, I, I haven't spoken to it. I don't need this. Just my opinion. I, yeah. Okay, thank you. So moving on to E, 
the next application um, from Kitty Kitty Theatre Company, approving the sum of $8,536 plus GST if applicable, be paid from the board's community fund account to Kitty Kitty Theatre Company for costs towards black at a stage show. Do I have a mover? I'll move that to get it on the table. Is there a seconder? Do I have a seconder? To, I've got a hand up there, but I can't see whose it is. Catherine's hand is up. Catherine. Oh, sorry, Catherine. <laughs> can you pop your oh, hand? Sorry, I'll just drop. Do I have a seconder to get this I'll on the table? I'll seconder to get it on the table. Thank you. you. That was Lane. Dave. 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 Okay. Dave. And Catherine, have we received? Yes, did we, we have. We did receive some. We have, and I've just received a clearer copy because the first copy I received was quite small. I can share it on screen. Give me one moment. I'm just trying okay. to get it up big enough that I can read it. <laughs> Computing, you can do this. There you want me to share my screen? Okay. Hopefully you can see that. That's the statement of financial yes, performance that they have sent Thank through. Thank you. Do you want to just take a minute and have a little look at that? It's wonderful that they had such a great success in, in difficult times with their sound of music. That was um, a real triumph for them. Okay, so you, are you is everybody had a look at that? Madam Chair, just just one observation I'd make. I I did make the comment during the presentation that they had applied for this money without knowledge of their financial result, and asked, had you known that your result was as good as it was, would you have asked for the same amount? We're now in possession of the information that they in fact made a surplus of seven and a half thousand. And you sit and say to yourself, well, yes, well, then you don't quite need as much money as you thought you might have when you made the application. And I was a little disappointed that despite the fact that they had subsequently realised they'd made good money, they still expected us to pay out a cheque for the same amount. And I just find that just a little bit, I'm uncomfortable with that. Any other comments around this? They have specifically asked for it toward venue hire. Uh, the lady was quite clear, I think, Madam Chairman, in her presentation, she <coughs> said about three or possibly four times where the money was going. going. Right, no further discussion, then we'll put this to the vote. So I am in support. I abstain. I'm against it. Frank? I'm against. Against. I'm against. Okay, so that is lost. <coughs> and our final application uh, is the from the Fongaroa County Museum and Archives. 
approve the sum of four and a half thousand dollars be paid from the board's community fund account to Whangaroa County Museum and Archives for annual operating costs. Do I have a mover? I'll move it. I'll say. Bruce. Bruce and Lane, thank you. So Bruce moved and Lane seconded. Lane seconded, thank you. Okay. Discussion? Lane. Yeah, Madam Chairman, I, I have previously questioned our support of some of these small museums, and I'd like to somewhat retract that. I, I, I think these small local museums actually hold the fabric of our history of the, of the region, and, and I think we undervalue, I certainly have undervalued them up to this point. I think they serve a purpose. So I, I speak in support of this application. Thanks, Lane. Any other comments, queries? I was intrigued, Bruce. Um, I've always wondered about the status. I knew there was a boundary issue with the property, but I always wondered about the status of the land and had never looked into it. So interested to know it's actually not a council reserve and we have been for quite some years assisting with funding of, for operational expenses and out of policy decision. But I'm with Lane. I mean, I think it's a really, a really vital um, asset to the community and I know it's very popular. Manawai. If I can, oh, sorry. You're okay. You're okay. I can add something to that though. I've just thought of it. Um, originally the council sold that building to pay a debt that was on the end of the Paihia Wharf, which uh, grated with me um, immensely, and I tried getting that money back, but uh, to no avail. Um, yes, I could go way back into the whole history of it, but I do recall that. I, so. I do recall you yeah, raising that yeah. some years ago. Yes, I do. It yeah. was a bit of a bizarre situation. Yes, I'm not quite sure if the money went directly like that, but yes, there was, was a... Um, I think it was uh, yeah. our quite mayor at the time. Um, quite yes, some time yeah. ago. Yes, it was. Yes, I won't say too much more than that, but it's history. So, yeah. Yeah. Part Shout of the history of the Sanders from the Raya. Yes. Yeah. 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 And here so we, we are still with. supporting it, which is great. <laughs> Manawai. Uh, yeah, kia ora. I, I appreciate the information that groups like this bring to let us know how COVID's impacting them. You know, it's it's quite severe some of the impact and it's sudden. So it was good to hear um some of the detail and some of the ways in which it's particularly affecting them mm. these smaller parts of our communities. Kia ora. Okay. Dave. So it's my intention to vote against this and uh so I'll speak to it now rather than put a, a note on the minutes. Um that um I'm uh, actually still of the opinion of what um, Member Eyre has um, said before in terms of operational costs. Um, so I think that um, I'm, I'm mindful that, that as we start this um, this new financial year, that if we set a precedence around um, supporting financial costs, that or, or and that's similarly with the, the previous one around security cameras, that we could expend all of our funds um, just on one particular item or one particular um, uh, funding issue and, and and I'm not very happy about that. So in this case, I, I see that the, the the museum struggles and, and Bruce, it's not about supporting your local community on this that have been located anywhere in the district. Um, I would feel the same and I think um, in this instance, that's why I'm not supporting it. So kia ora. Thank you, Dave. Lane? Oh, hand gone. No. Yes, no. Sorry, your hand is up and Dave's oh, hand is I can't up. Do, I can't put my hand up and unmute myself at the same time. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think Dave wrote to put, and it may behoove us at some point in the future or, or another community board or, to actually get a list of all these local museums and we should actually sort of structure our support of them because th there's numerous throughout our wards um, from Russell to Kaio to I think there's another one in Whangaroa 
Like, so, uh, Tocha North, like a private one. So, there's a whole number of them that, that we probably need some form of policy or structure about how we look after them. Anyway, thank you. I'm sorry to. No, you've raised a valid point because I did query this some time ago. Um, Bruce, you might remember years ago, museums were actually listed in our delegations and they disappeared. And um, I, I've always been sort of wondering why, but I guess because not all museums sit on council land, uh, which which I'm now aware of. Um, well, that's two I'm aware of now, but we do have, you know, Russell and Pi here and probably some others, but um, it would be something that that definitely um, we could get clarification on as to um, what museums we have and what the status of them is and, and whose land they sit on and why they were in our delegations and have been removed. I'm not really sure because they do still come to community board when it comes down to funding. But if it, I, I, I'm assuming because they sit on our reserves and the reserves fall under our delegation. So. Um, we, we do need, and perhaps it's something that, that um, at um, Councillor Smith's Committee at Strategy and Policy, when the parks and reserves come up, that I can actually ask the question at that particular time, um, because we're going to be addressing that very soon. So, it, yes, we do have some that we own and some that we don't, and some that are externally managed and some done by volunteers. So it would be good, Lane, to get clarification on, on yep. museums um, moving forward. <laughs> A little bit right. of concern we never heard. So we haven't voted on that yet, I don't think. Um, moved, Bruce seconded Lane. Did we vote on that, Joshna? No. Okay. I'm in support. No. I'm in support. I'm in support. Frank in favour. Abstain. No from me. Right, moving on to item 8.1. I'll move that the recommend uh, the recommendation that the Bay of Islands Whangarei Community Board receive the report funding granted by the Bay of Islands Whangarei Community Board 2016 to 2022 financial years. Do I have a seconder? I'll Lane. second. Lane. Yep. Now you did receive additional information on Monday from Joshna with the um, those six years breakdown of the um, of the funding. We've got Catherine with us. If you would like to ask questions and have a discussion around this. I just want to say thank you, job done, Catherine, to save me going through all my agendas and compiling it myself. That's a lot of a lot of work there. Um, and I did appreciate the graphs, and I have noticed with time how much more we're spending on infrastructure. Um, it's been quite interesting over the years to to look at where our money is going. And um, we keep talking about COVID constantly, but I think we have to just treat that as the new normal now and move on. There's a few discrepancies I had, mainly around um, some things that that were applied for in one ward, but uh, sorry, in one subdivision area, but perhaps took place across the ward or in another subdivision area. And I think that that's just um, showing. Um, the keenness from from communities that that applying for things that they are also going to benefit from, which may not actually be happening, particularly like the in their subdivision area. And I think a classic of that is probably to give you an example would be like Shirley May, who resides in the Kalkoa Morawa area, but as as an ongoing stalwart who's won awards for her. <laughs> her diligence and perseverance with the Country Rock and Jazz Festival, which the whole Bay of Islands area does benefit from um, in a different way and probably predominantly pie here, Russell. So there is, you know, it is a bit skewed here and there. With um, that one I, specifically, because it was Clark's yes. Coaches, which was based in Kawakawa, and that was what you funded. That's sure. why I put it in that ward. Oh, okay, that's that makes sense. But yeah, in my mind, I'm thinking it's mm. it's Bay of Islands based, but probably Pai here centric based. But it was it showed up in a different area. But all in all, um, it's it's very interesting reading, and it just made me realise how how much we rely on focus pie here now and how little pie here has been doing other than their events annually so 
hats off to focus in this instance um, because so much <coughs> has been done in the town over the last six years and I think without their collaborative um, approach I, I don't feel that a hell of a lot would have been done in the Rao Paihi Haruri Waitangi at all so um, great yeah, interesting to see that breakdown uh, not, not that you like it, <laughs> Kia ora. so this has come about because of the inquiries that have come through from my community around um, what's been granted and discussions that have taken place as a result of those questions um, to see if there are any differences over the years with the impact of COVID-19 in particular, because we started to notice that groups weren't in a position who've traditionally applied for funding from our group, from our board, weren't applying. And some of the corridor that's come from our community is that they've been involved in the COVID response and their focus has been on that response and they haven't had the freedom um, that some of perhaps some of their counterparts across the ward in the district may have had in order to apply as frequently as they've done in the past. It was about observing that. But it's also about having the courage to have sometimes a difficult conversation and just presenting the community with the information. I can make some, I can perceive and, and, and have a look at some of the data and, and read it in a particular way. But I don't always, I'm not always able to match that data with the experience of the community. The part of getting this information out is around valuing the community experience and their feedback. Uh, it's not just me saying this, that, and the next thing. It's about getting their input too. So thank you for compiling this report. I have foreshadowed an amendment because I think that list that you sent through was really informative. And actually what I was after, that's what I had asked for. And uh, I could have been a bit more clear about that. So thank you for providing that this week after I replied back to the email. And I'm continuing to foreshadow an amendment uh, to leave it to lie so that it is paper publicly notified in the next agenda. And we didn't have that opportunity to paper publicly notify that list that came through in the last couple of days. So I'm still very keen to have that um, left alive for that reason. Kia ora. Dave next. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm happy to um, second Manawai's um, amendment if that's actually been tabled. Yeah, I would like to leave that amendment. Oh, well, I'm happy to second that. Okay, I have got Manawai move and Dave second. Lane? Uh, Madam Chairman, just a, just a comment, um, and you raised focus play here. How would you quantify the targeted rate that is given to focus play here? How would that be? I mean, that's almost a grant from the council, isn't it? Targeted rate is paid by the rate payer. Yeah. And so, so therefore you would, you would, I think all I'm saying is it's a bit, it's maybe not a good example to use focused pie here because they do receive funding from the council, be it a targeted rate, but a lot of, most of our other communities don't get that. So there, there are a number of issues at play with income from Focus Paihe within our community. As you're well aware, the Paihe Village Green, probably the most contentious, um, and also the, um, the targeted rate. The targeted rate um, has been in place for some years and was doubled, and that was put in place to progress the master plan, which is any work done in the um, CBD area. And as such the community is happy to contribute to the work done in the CBD area. So the my, my comments are around the fact that that money is used by them as seed funding and had they had do we, if we didn't have focus pie here and we didn't have a targeted rate and we didn't have them taking the money from the village green income and using it you know for seed funding and external funding, we wouldn't have the projects being um, done that we have been seeing um, through focus without the subsidy from the ratepayer and the resident and the visitor income from the cruise ship days on the market days. 
but then your application for from that subdivision would be greater. If you were if you weren't getting funding from there and you had to seek funding from the council, then I'm not I'm not I'm not faulting. They would be coming to the, they would yeah what basically they would I be think, coming to the community board lane. Well, yeah, that's right. So what I'm saying is you, you've got to take some of these things into balance when you look at information such as this. That's all. So anyway, but just just to make the point. Yes, yes. Right. Dave. Thank you, Madam Chair. I had my hand up originally to speak to the, the bit before I got to second um, Manawai's um, um, motion or amendment. I just wanted to, to reiterate two things. Well, the, the first one is, is just around the fact that I, I would have preferred to see that this report included the um, analysis of the well-beings that were being addressed through the funding applications and the funding grants. And the second thing, and I wanted to address um, Member Ayer's comments earlier in the, in the meeting regarding um, looking at the size of the subdivisions. And I want to com come back to an issue that I perpetually raise around equity and the fact that equity is not equality. And therefore, the, the just because a, a subdivision is larger doesn't necessarily mean that it should receive the most money uh, on a like-for-like -like basis of per head of population. Um, that in addressing inequities that we often require to put more money into certain places, um, I look in, 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 in somewhat horror, really, to see how little it goes to Whangaroa um, as, a, as a district, and, and yet I don't see a lot of applications coming through for um, funding grants, but recognise that there are a number of marae and other organisations in the district who, uh, according to our other funding grants allocated, could and should probably be funded. So I just wanted to note that 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 you know part of our discussions we don't seem to have got anywhere. And I I, I tell Toko Manawai's frustration at saying that we've had and I've been on this board for a couple of strategic planning years now, and these issues around equity and addressing how we're going to do stuff to get agreement moving forward haven't been solidified into the planning. I feel that our voices are unheard, and that the final documents of strategic documents moving forward don't reflect the discussions that we've had. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of some years ago that I heard uh, on the radio someone talking about Māori voices in this particular the case where they were talked about Māori consultation and a uh, woman said my grandmother was consulted on many times and she said, and nothing ever happened. And she said, we, we're not going to be um, participating in this until we, we see evidence that our voices are heard and things are enacted. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm somewhat frustrated about um, these issues and, and I think what Manawai is trying to um, convey is a transparency around our decision making um, and in this case um, I think that we you know we could do better around providing that information as well so uh, 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 there's no change in, in what I've said on this board in the time that I've been here around those issues of equity um, and equity versus uh, equality thank you Thanks, Dave. And we have picked up on that. And as as we've discussed a couple of times already today, pre and within the meeting, that we do require a workshop um, because the policy doesn't address some of the things that we're discussing and that you're pointing out today. So definitely, um, I've got it down on for a worksheet for the community grant fund workshop. And whether we workshop that prior to the elections or whether we leave that for the incoming board to workshop, it would certainly be good for us to um, clarify some of the criteria and some of these issues that um, you're raising around equity and population and areas and who gets what and, and what sort of criteria should be in that. So so I think there, there definitely is room for us to perhaps do some work on that and leave it for a new board to actually um, put their stamp on 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 the well-beings and what they would like to see moving forward at the moment you know the, the the policy doesn't stipulate exactly along the lines of what you're um referring to manawai yeah ngama he kia koe hoa dave um i just wanted to say that it's it's um there's there's low diversity in this board and it can be quite tough, which is one of the reasons why at the beginning I wanted us to have a tongue session because it's about trying to address 
um, the potential for that low diversity to impact our way forward. And um, for people like me, who are identifiably quite different in thinking and being to a number of the other members on our board, um, it can be quite isolating for me. And um, to come up and, and to share something that's a normal conversation and normal concern for my community and to have it um, sometimes shut down in this environment. And it's one of the reasons why many of the whānau in our community don't put themselves up for this kind of role in local government because they don't want to be in this um, sometimes awful space for three years. It can be fatiguing and quite lonely. And it's definitely one of the reasons why I won't be going for re-election. And I just want to encourage us all to consider the way in which we speak and the thinking and the behind our decisions because we're privileged. We live in warm homes. We have a great internet connection that only needs 1.5 drops of rain to be disturbed on the signal. Um, we have kai in our cupboards and we have water in our taps and that's not the common experience in, amongst my people, our people in our community. So filling out an application for funding, sometimes not the first priority or even the 10th on their minds. Kia ora. Thanks, Manawai. Anybody else want to... We, discuss this amendment, um, which is put by you, Mana, why you want to leave it to lie on the table until all the information is publicly notified. Is that correct? Yes, please. And Dave, you happy to second that? Yes, I am. Joshna, do you have that no. wording? No, I do not. That the Bay of Islands will grow board and I'm going to need wording. Oh. We want to leave this to lie on the table. So, um, so it does not receive the report. Is that what you want to say? So here we get into the direct negative, Asia, don't we? So we, what we are saying is that um, we we leave well, the really report. To leave, yeah, to lie until the additional document supplied can be publicly notified. And Which is the agenda? Thank you. Then we should avoid all of the negatives. <laughs> Leaves the report to lie on the table. Ending further. Uh, until the additional information circulated. Can I say it's pending the circulation pending, yeah. of You're the further expert. information? It's the, it's the that, information that you forwarded to us, mm -hmm. correct, Manawai, that you want included in the agenda in the yeah. for the August meeting? Yes, please. To lie on the table pending the circulation further. Okay, looks good. I'm going to okay, need so we, a division for this. Yeah. Hang on, so just read that out that the Bay of Islands Whangaroa Community Board leaves the report funding granted by the Bay of Islands from Community Board 2016. Malima, you want to comment on the wording? Through the chair, um, mm. I just want to make uh, some clarity around circulation of further information. It, rather, it should state that it was additional information circulated yes. by staff. Thank you. What was that? Pending the inclusion, take out circulation, the inclusion of the additional information provided, additional information provided by staff. Happy with that, Manawai and Dave, as mover and seconder? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, can right, have a so we've got an amendment there, moved by Manawai Well, seconded by Dave, and I'm in support. Oh, I'm in support. I'm in support. Frank, support. Total call. Yes. That's carried, and the amendment now becomes the substantive motion. Very so nice. I'm in support. 
I need going to need a mover for the substantive motion. Yes. I'll move. Bruce, yes. Wait, wait, wait. I, I'm going to need Lane a mover. And so is Manawai moving the substantive motion? Yes. No, and Lane the... did, and she seconded it. Manawai seconded it. I'm going to need a voting for this. Yes, in support. Yes, in support. Yes, in support. Frank, in support. Total goal. Yes, from Dave. Okay. Through the chair, Madam Chair, I note that yes. Catherine Trewin has her hand raised. Oh, sorry, Catherine, you do. Yes. No, that's okay. Just for clarity from the board, I'm just making sure that I give you exactly what you're asking for this time. Can you please confirm that I'm just putting forward the same report, but making sure the additional attachments are included on it this time round? Yes, Thank I'm getting you. a nod. Yes. Awesome. That's fine. I just want Thank to make sure I'm giving you what you asked for. Perfect. Thank Coming you, everyone. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, that's carried. Moving on to item 8.2. I'll move that the Bay of Islands Whangara Community Board receive the report Bay of Islands Whangara Community Board Action Sheet update as it, it's July 2022. Do you have a seconder? Yes, I'll second Bruce, oh. thank you, Bruce. Now, you'll notice it's a tad confusing. There's a bit of duplication in my printed copy. I'm not sure if you have it in your electronic copy. But we shall work through this. So Manuela is not here, but that Okiato, the Tapu Point has looks like that hasn't gone anywhere yet. It's probably in the too hard basket and requires um, surveying. I believe it was surveyed. I'm not quite sure what the next step is. So we need to follow up on that one, Joshna, and see what's happening there. Sure. Morton Bay Fig. That can remain on there. That has actually been included. It's in the notable tree register, so that will be included in the Russell Place making um, plan that is currently under progress. Yeah. Turning the page, we have the. You're not mooted, Lane. Turning the page, we have the Alfresco dining application one, the Duke. Um, You'll all be aware that that um, these are being rolled over until further notice due to the time frame around the placemaking project. Um, I've got a note here uh, since this was printed, Josh, in a strategy and policy meeting that I attended in June, there was a recommendation to revoke the policy, the Alfresco dining policy, because it is now included in the new road use bylaw, which was the intention. So the policy will be no longer needed. Um, it's being replaced by an appropriate internal policy, which is really great for the board. Um, previously, it was external. So now with the internal policy, um, we will have a lot more input into that. And um, hopefully with time, with this new policy, um, road use by law um, be included in the processes and applications moving forward. So that's just a little bit of an update, which has happened probably since this went to print. Uh, anything True Park House, Frank? I think you did cover that in your report. Um, I think to the best of my knowledge, it is now under the horse policy. Um, we had our annual meeting on Monday, Tuesday, and um, there'll probably be a reasonably comprehensive report on Cherry Park in my report due uh, for next meeting. Excellent. Great. Good to see that progress there. It's, uh... Bit of a win for the board that one with you getting stuck into it. The next page, uh, 125, has been duplicated if you're looking at a printed agenda. I'm not sure what it is online, so delete that page. Um, page 27, relocation installation of the Kitty Kitty Domain Playground, Tocha North Hall Reserve. Uh, anything to report on that, Bruce? I'm um, probably looking at Lane here. Uh, Lane? <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Um, Has it gone? Have you... No, 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 it hasn't. No. It ha at the moment, we're too wet to move it. But the funds are there and the will is there. Um, and the last time I spoke to David Clamp, he was going to sit down or get in touch with Bruce just to make sure we're they're in a receiving mood at the other end. Okay, so that's in progress. <laughs> it moveth okay. slowly, Madam Chairman, but it does moveth. It's slippery. <laughs> it's so wet underground, yeah, underfoot, I mean. Okay, uh, the next one, Strategy and Policy Committee Framework, Cheryl Gavin. Yes, that's obviously work in progress. Then we have... Uh, the road naming, well, we know that Glenn has um, took staff around the wording for consultation feedback requested from Harpo. Um, Madam Chair, this can be removed because Glenn has updated just the board. Can... Yeah. Yes, yes, and we're now working on that new, uh, the road, the policy, so that can come off. Remove. And further information on costings be gathered from community plans. This information will be provided to the community board the August meeting. Okay, so that's in relation. The next item is the motion we moved in relation to um, uh, the lights, the lane, the bowling club um, from our amenity lighting suggested list. So that's coming to our August meeting. And the final item is Par Road. Par Road petition. Do we know if that's actually this can the be request? This can, can be, be removed. removed. Yeah, because the post construction audit report was provided to the board. It was just for circulation. So we wanted actually to make sure that that went to the petition writers, a copy of that. So has I see here the request allocate to the report writer to provide the copy. Um, shall we leave it there till we know whether that's actually been done? Okay. Elaine, are you aware whether they've received a copy of that? I'm unaware. Right. Okay, so we'll just leave it there till we get confirmation on that. And okay. the next page I have, the rest of it is actually um, duplicated. Okay. Madam Chair, can I... Is it right that I can um, add a resolution to this list, being the car park area, or overflow car park area at the Whangaroa, by the Whangaroa Going Fish Club? Should I move? Yes. Um, it's been so long-winded. It's just been going backwards and forwards and all over the place, and it's come to no resolution whatsoever. So I think that we need some direction. Um, I've got down here the overflow car park known as the green area, South of the Fungora Game Fishing, uh, the Fungora Sports Fishing Club, be metalled to an all weather surface. So, in order to get this metalled, um, we could put it on our, it's not an out, it is an outstanding issue because it's historical, mm -hmm. but it hasn't, so I guess we could put it in there and follow it up. Um, with an REFS. Josh, no, can we have some direction? David Clendon, you've got your <coughs> hand up. Would you like to comment on this? Oh, it's a slightly different issue. It's not specific to oh, that. Okay. Um, it's, it's a different item in I'll a similar vein, but, but please do come back, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, various, I've had various RFSs to this all over the years. Yes. Um, I mean, one of them here is the 407342, which has been acknowledged. Um, when was that one acknowledged? Oh, that was middle of last year again. <laughs> so, so can we, Bruce, put put a um, can you forward that the wording to Joshna, and we will um, add that into the action sheet um, as historical RFSs that have fallen off and have not been resolved. Excuse me. <coughs> Um, Belinda, right. what I, uh, Chair Belinda, what I yes. could do is, has there been a resolution around this previously? No, not to my knowledge, Bruce, has there? It's just gone through in our um, 
as RFS is, and in our previous, this is, I remember this going back when we used to meet at the Whangarau Gamefish Club years ago. Um, we used to walk out and examine that muddy area every time we met there. And um, it just seems to me that there's an issue with getting it metalled and whether that's a reluctancy to get it into a job like that shouldn't have to go through the LTP. We're not asking for a for ceiling or um, we're not asking for like what we did in, in Russell outside the church thing. It's just, it's not that complicated and it's not that expensive. Um, it needs to be captured though, because it keeps falling off um, Bruce's outstanding RFSs to the point where um, it keeps coming up every time we, we, um, yeah. Okay. go through an LTP process and of course it's difficult to get anything into that from a board level. The original plan was to have these adobe tiles tiles there and I think and the uh, quote they got was about $48,000 from memory which of course put the council into a tailspin and nothing's really been done ever since and in talking to the local community just recently um, basically, that's basically saying well just give us a medal make it weatherproof so they've come back from you know, wanting something more elaborate to just getting something done practically. Mm, just to make an all-weather surface out of it. Right. You know, if it gets upgraded at some later stage, that's that's fine. But I mean, at this stage, they need to get something done. And so, uh, can we resolve this because it's not on our action sheet, and we do, we haven't had a resolution? Can we raise a resolution for Bruce to? Yes. To to meet his meeting with the CEO soon next week, I think. That's Can right. we raise um, a resolution that Bruce include this area in this site visit and his discussions with the CEO? I'm going to have to raise an amendment to this uh, action report to include that new resolution into the action report. So I'm going like okay. an amendment we've done this before with um yes. okay yeah mm -hmm. so i'm going to need a mover for bruce's inclusion so bruce has moved and i'll mm -hmm. second that i've got my hand up there okay <laughs> so, so it will be to receive the report uh, and include, what words shall I use for Bruce? Do you want my wording or? Yeah. What do you want to include into the action sheet for next time? Um, <clears throat> that the overflow car park, known as the green area, south of the Whangarai Sports Fishing Club, be metalled to an all weather Surface. What is that? Ah, you're too fast for me. Um, Pongara Sports Club. That. that the overflow car park so south of the Fungaroa Fishing Club. Yes. That'll do, yeah. No one has the green area. <laughs> it's just very green. No, it's not green, it's mud. Do they still <laughs> have the recycling bins there? That's right, yeah, yeah. Madam Chairman, could I just clarify a question? That is council land, is it not? Yes, it is. I can't yeah. clarify that, but I assume so, no, because for years and years we've been talking about this recycling area being mud. Yeah, it was all part of the reclamation that was done back in about 2003, which I was on the community board back then when we did so, it. So, yeah. so it's probably classified as road, legal road, I'd say. But we don't know. I mean, this could... This, Part that'll come. Problem. That'll come out if they don't want to metal it. I guess, Lane. <laughs> now, I wasn't trying to to <laughs> be obstructive in any way. I just wanted to make sure that we were because yeah, there is a, there, there is a point there that it's the game fish club, no. isn't it? Where, no, yeah. It's not. No, it's it's actually yeah. It's beside to the south of there. It's the south of there. Yeah. Yeah, I know the area. But you know where the area is where you drive in. Yeah. It's yeah. at the beginning of where you drive into the car park that goes through and out the other side. Yeah. South of Whangarei Fishing Club Green Area. Is um, it Whangaroa or Whangarei? No, that's right, Whangaroa. 
that's correct. Um, Bruce, you want it to, um, to, to be met? To be metalled. metalled. Yeah, to be metalled. Or surfaced as an all weather site. That's right. Yes. To Most be metalled it. or surfaced appropriately, whatever the, the cheaper cost is. Oh, as an all weather as an all weather site. So you can't drive up to it and chuck your rubbish tin and you have to take your gum boots and wade in through the mud. No, no, that's that's nice and straight, you know. That's clean okay. and recycling is so yeah. So we'll put that in and member member mills to liaise. Uh, Madam Chair, just before you progress it, I wonder if I might just make a comment because it might be appropriate to Certainly, add David. some more words to this amendment, to the um, mm -hmm. motion yeah. rather. Yeah. I'm just looking at some of these resolutions. That first one in regard to the um, Tapu Point Orkiato, yes. that goes back to November 2020, yes. 20 months ago, um, and there's no, no evidence of action. I am management to work with staff for an update 20 months later. Um, the or Morton Bay fig issue, June 2021. So that's over a year ago. Again, Arbolab to be engaged on a way forward. And finally, the um, resolution in regard to the developing uh, a framework for funding community mm -hmm. facilities, February 21, as a matter of urgency, um, 17 months ago, you know, the board indicated some urgency in getting a framework. The last report back was four months ago in March. I, th I think it would be appropriate for the chair to write to the chief executive highlighting the time, the spread of the, uh, the amount of time that has elapsed. It indicates, I think it's entirely possible, having had some recent experience in similar issues, that some of these tasks may have been assigned to to staff members who have since left the organisation or are now yes. in different jobs or are sitting at the bottom of somebody's drawer, frankly. And I don't think it's good enough, you know, that a community board should be waiting 20 months for a specific request in one example, and all they're getting back is, oh yes, the management will work with the staff. I don't think that's good enough. So I'd encourage an amendment, I'm not in a position to put it, but that the um, chair write to the chief executive highlighting the time that has passed and asking for a prompt response um, at the latest, some action or at least uh, uh, an indication of some action before the next board meeting. Thanks, David. And that's exactly what's happening um, behind the scenes. Joshna is working through all our historical RFSs um, and we have actually taken quite a few off. The, um, the other aspect is that between now, the end of the financial year, and the elections, um, the the aim is to actually remove all outstanding or historical RSSs RFSs or resolve them in some way for the incoming board not to have to deal with them. And you're correct about staff. That very first item is a difficult item, and Manuela and I have been very patient waiting on that. We believe a survey has been done historically, but it's a case of um, sourcing that information and maybe re-identifying or resurveying the original boundary pegs to achieve what we want to achieve. But in that instance, a staff member did actually leave. And I'm not sure how um, how up to date the new member is. So um, Joshna has assured us she's working through these. And the Arbor Lab one, um, the Morton Bay, there are some alternatives also being looked at in relation to ongoing care for that tree um, in the placemaking plan. So I don't know that we really need to have a resolution to the CEO, Joshua, at this point, do we? No, the CEO is currently working through the action sheet. Yes. He's on a project with that. I think that was one of the first mm. things he's been rolled out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I was mm. aware of that, but Point taken, David. I think yeah, we have been very patient with some of these, but um, since Blair's arrival, he has been, you know, hammering them out, and we're slowly working our way through them. So, or he is. So, okay, well, that's so good to hear. But I wonder, could that be recorded in the minutes? That there's an expectation that 
because that's news to me. And I mean, a member of the public reading this report okay. might well you think that the community yeah. board is simply, you know, shouting into the wind right. because these right. things are taking so long. Right. So if it's minuted that, yes, there's an expectation that yeah. all of these issues will be dealt with, it gives us something to hang further discussions yeah. on. That is a good point. I'm quite happy to move um, move that under yeah. 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 this as yeah. another amendment um, oh, yeah. Yeah. in relation to it resolving these prior to the next triennium. Sorry, I've just got something going on in the chat. Lane. Oh, sorry. Oh, what have I done? Madam Chairman, my apologies. No, I found Google Maps. I've just got Bruce here defining the area for me. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, Malima, thank you. I've just seen something you've put in the chat here that we receive the report. Approve yeah. that member mills include the appropriate metalling or resurfacing of the overflow car park. It's not really overflow car park, is it? It's just the, the recycling area, oh, Bruce, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. No, but they, they have terms of an overflow car park. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because it's... If, you're going to be pretty desperate to go and park in there because you might not get out again. So. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> okay. So we we firstly, we have to receive the report and then we have um, an additional amendment in relation to Bruce's motion about meddling it and you're going to liaise with who are you going to liaise with, Bruce? Are you going to bring it up with the CEO when you meet? I'll bring it up with the CEO, definitely, yeah. Next week? Okay. And, and Kelly also got that on her list. She was meeting there a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> with the community. Okay, fine. And, uh, and the other issue is, um, can we put these together, Josh, now? Do you, are you going to be... Are you going to, going to be speaking to the CEO? Bruce will be. Um, Bruce will be. Bruce will be talking about the meddling of the car park, and I think endorse that chair would write to the CEO seeking a prompt response and and action on unactioned historical. Well, that's already happening. So I think um, mm. what Malima has suggested is already you're already working on that, Joshna, with the CEO, or mm. and with his instruction. So I think um, that, that... Shall we that, leave it as simple as this, where it includes in the next action sheet that the overflow car park and member mills to lay is with the CEO? Yes. Mm. Yes, that's fine, that one. Do you want us to vote on that first? Yes. So moved, Bruce, seconded myself. So I'll put that to... Are you happy with that wording, Bruce? Yes, definitely. Okay, I'm in support. I'm in support. I'm Frank in support. support. Yep. Cool. And Dave. And me. Thank you. Thank you. That's carried. Great. It becomes Angel, a substantive motion. Okay. <laughs> oh. um, I'll move the substantive. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, just as a point of clarity, there is no, uh, it suggests the RFS in the amendment, and there's no RFS number attached to that. In uh, Bruce's? My one. So where it is, so up, and includes the following RFS onto the next action sheet update. I can give you one. Yes, yeah, so. Got... Can you give Bruce, it to Bruce, you me, had Bruce? a number. You, I've yes. got a number here. Okay. 4070342. Okay. And there will be a number of others, so it may be that it's linked to others. Exactly. Correct. Okay, ma'am. So we voted on that in the substantive yes and support. And a seconder for the substantive motion. Bruce, do you want to second that as yes, a substantive yes, motion, your amendment? Yes. Yep. Okay, have a division on this. Thank you. In support? In support. 
Franken support. Total support. Yes, from Dave. Thank you. That's great. Yes. Okay. So, Josh, no, I think we will, um, in, in respect to what Councillor Clendon has raised, I think that you and I will just work on that before we actually take any further action because we have been assured that um, all outstanding RFSs, uh, the aim is to deal with those prior to the new board being um, prior to the elections. Is that correct? Is that how you understand it? I believe there's a working list in order and um, mm. yeah, attention has been drawn to that outstanding okay. RFSs, yeah. Okay, so we'll see how we go with that um, yeah, for the next sorry, Madam meeting. Chair, I just, you mentioned in RFSs, I guess I was referring to resolutions of the board, which is a slightly different thing, isn't it? And one would hope would carry significant weight. I mean, I'm not yes. going to belabor the point, but perhaps a note in a minute to the effect that the board anticipates that the CEO will ensure that all outstanding action points are resolved before the end of this triennium. Rhonda, thank you, David. Rhonda. Okay, and these have come initially from RFSs and as well as, yes. Yeah. Well, from what I'm aware, most of these, maybe not the second one, but some of these have definitely come through RFSs and Bruce's definitely has as well. But all our RFSs are being worked through. So I guess what David is saying is in order to capture the resolutions that haven't originated from our historical RFSs, that we need to perhaps um, move that the... Um, that staff continue to work on resolving all outstanding resolutions with staff prior to the um, the new triennium. I think um, in just uh, to respond to Councillor Clendon, um, what Rondo has mentioned is that the CE is the CE is already aware of all the resolutions and these action sheets, which he's requested across all the boards, and he's referred them to the relevant departments to address. So he's on top of it. Yeah. Okay. That was my understanding as well. Okay. So we'll leave it at that for this month. Okay. Was that all that you had, Bruce? Or was just that one? outstanding item at them. I know you've got lots of other historical RFSs, but just that one that you required a resolution on today. Okay, thank you. Right, anything else to be added to our <laughs> outstanding action sheet? No? And that brings us to the end of our meeting. Yeah, we've got to get to public excluded to confirm the previous minutes for the public excluded. Oh yes, I do have something. Just before we move into that, Joshna, I would like to to go back to the beginning, sorry, of the meeting, and just note. I know you will have noted when Councillor Smith departed, mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to formally move um, apologies from Manuela Murhonel, please. Okay. Um. Are you moving and can we have a seconder? Yes, please. Do I have a, a seconder? I'll second. Thank you, Lane. We're going to need a division for this. Yes, and support. Thank you. Yes, support. Oh, one second. Yes. Yes. 
Frank and Thank support. You. Manuay and Dave. Yes, yes, both uses. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Carrie, thank you very much. Yeah. So if there's nothing else to add to that, and I have um, made a note that we need to um, look at our community grant funding policy and what we as an outgoing board would like to note or see in that. Um, I'm not sure whether you want to workshop it or whether you just want to forward me your bulletproof comments on what you would like to see as guidelines or criteria. We're well aware of the well-beings, but if you could, that might be the best way to do it actually, and I can um, put them all together if you would like to send me, or we could workshop it once we've got all the ideas. If there's anything that you'd like, how are you feeling about, about that with that? Yep. I think that's fine, Madam Chair. Okay, so because we do, I mean, we, we're not going to change a policy overnight and we do recognise that we've got the same issues. Um, it's a bit like the road naming policy. The same issues are, are rearing their, their ugly head every time and we do need to make sure that, that we capture that. Um, it may or may not be that Casey, she's doing an amazing job putting together um, information for the induction and handover. It may be that she already has that in her sites and I need to actually check with her whether or not that is going to be workshopped prior to, Asia may be aware, I'm not sure whether there's anything in the calendar. Um, it might be a really good one if we have a final combined community board workshop um, for us to all have a really good robust discussion around that. Um, even without staff um, is something that, that you might prefer to do. But it would just mean that we could all perhaps get a, a common denominator because this policy has to fit all three boards. So they may have thought or have other issues that we don't have and vice versa, where they may not agree with what, what we're trying to introduce. So, um, so send me your thoughts on that and I'll follow up with governance and see whether or not um, we have um, another combined workshop set down before the end of the triennium. And if so, perhaps that could be a really good hot topic um, to have on there, Aisha or Rhonda, if you're listening. Joshna, all yeah. of you. Yeah. Okay. So with that... Um, we need to go to public excluded. Oh, yes, we do. We do. Thank you very much. So I will move. Oh, OK, Malima, before we do that, um, just to let you know um, that the local elections team um, who are doing the rounds of the district to promote the upcoming local elections uh, will be in Paihia, Opua and Russell tomorrow. Uh, sharing information about the upcoming local elections. So um, I'll get that out there um, in the community. Hopefully people, I'm not sure where they will be. Do we know where they will be, Malima? Out in the rain on the village green or somewhere? Uh, I'm, they'll be in the public spaces in Paihia or Pua and okay. Russell. We'll send that out to the members. Right. Wonderful. Thank you for that plug. Excellent. And for those of you that haven't seen Casey's um, video, it's star studded with all of you. It's great. Really, really good job. Well done. Right. So I will move that we um, move into public exclusion for the um, confirmation of the previous minutes, please. Do I have a seconder? Bruce, thank you. I'm going to have to, sorry, do a division on this. Are we all good? Yes. Yeah. Rhonda? Yeah. Rhonda? Mm. Okay, so I'll put the recap. Thank you. So the recommendation is that.
Thank you. And thank you to the members of the public who have uh, sat in and watched today on this miserable day. For joy thank you for joining us. And um, for those of you that didn't pick up, our local um, elections team will be floating around in the pie here, Opua and Russell communities tomorrow to share information about the changes in the new upcoming local elections. They'll be around in public spaces. Uh, Catherine. Um, through the chair, I don't know if many of you remember Aya Morris, who used to be one of our community development advisors. She went to work for the Department of Internal Affairs. She has recently been appointed a Fulbright Scholar and will be going to the States in August for six months to study at Columbia University. And I just thought you might like to know that because that's that's quite an accomplishment. Very Thank you. much so. Very much so. Congratulations to Aya. Okay, thank you for that, Catherine. So with no further business, I thank you all for joining us today. And um, I will ask, uh, Dave, would you like to close us with a karakia? Yep, sure. Thank you. Ai o ki te rangi, ai o ki te whenua, ai o ki nga tangata katoa. Peace to the skies, peace to the land, peace to all people. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.